Shakti Kothari, and I am honored to be your host for this special evening. Tonight, we gather once again to celebrate and honor the exceptional individuals and innovative initiatives that continue to make significant strides in environmental conservation and sustainable practices. Our awards for the night are sponsored by India's leading natural gas company, Gale, Energizing Possibilities, BPCL, Energizing Lives, HPCL, a Maharatna company in the oil and gas sector, and NTPC, Transforming Lives. Other sponsors for the night include Karnataka Soaps and Detergents Limited, a government of Karnataka undertaking, and learning jockey, Genuine is Rare. We would also like to give special thanks to our technology partner, Marut Seed Copter, One Step Towards Green India, and adventure partner, Hero X Pulse, Make New Tracks. To kick off our evening, let's begin with a beautiful audio-visual presentation that will provide insight into the incredible work of our eco-warriors that will, and the compelling reasons behind our recognition of this Sepler service. Our beautiful planet, Earth's eco-warriors, are none other than our IFS officers, who serve as passionate advocates for the planet's well-being. The Indian Forest Services stands as one of the three All India Services of the Government of India, alongside the Indian Administrative Service and the Indian Police Service. It was constituted in the year 1966 under the All India Services Act of 1951. After successfully conquering the UPSC challenge, choosing the Indian Forest Services as a career path is no ordinary decision. Those who opt for the Indian Forest Services have a unique love for nature, a profound sense of responsibility towards our planet, and a fervent passion for initiating sustainable and beneficial challenges for both humankind and the Earth. These IFS officers are dedicated individuals actively engaged in promoting environmental conservation, sustainability, and the battle against climate change. Armed with knowledge and a profound sense of responsibility, eco-warriors champion various causes, ranging from the preservation of biodiversity to the dissemination of awareness about pressing environmental issues. They drive change through grassroots initiatives, online campaigns, and community outreach passionately encouraging societies and governments to embrace eco-friendly practices and policies. The infrastructure development like dams, roads, and railway line construction, besides mining for coal, diamonds, and minerals, also takes a toll on the environment. Indian Forest Services officers have ensured conservation of both flora and fauna in the country. Available data is a testimony that forest cover in India has increased over the years, and so has wildlife like tigers, leopards, and elephants. It is due to their sustained efforts that cheetahs have now returned after a gap of 70 years. Eagle warriors possess a deep understanding of the delicate balance between humanity and nature, tirelessly working to safeguard our planet for current and future generations, thereby catalyzing a more sustainable and harmonious coexistence with the Earth. Indian Masterminds proudly introduces the Eco Warriors Award to recognize their remarkable contributions. This annual accolade aims to fill a void that has long existed in the national recognition landscape. By instituting the Eco Warriors Award, we not only honor these exemplary individuals, but also provide them with a platform to showcase their achievements. We are privileged to be joined by esteemed personalities and experts from the fields of forestry and wildlife conservation today who will help us acknowledge and celebrate these extraordinary contributions. We hope you've all had the opportunity to visit the photo gallery. If not, I kindly request you to please do so during the tea time. It is a wonderful display of talent by ace wildlife photographer and documentary maker of international recognition, Mr. Mohammad Aslam Warsi and we are thankful to him for agreeing to showcase his pieces of art. Now, keeping with the tradition, we will commence with the lighting of the lamp, symbolizing knowledge, wisdom, and prosperity. I invite our chief guest for the conclave, patron of the IFS Association, Dr. S.P. Yadav, president of the association in ADG Forest, Dr. S.K. Awasthi, general secretary, Dr. Sunish Bakshi, 
along with our editor, Mr. Sharad Gupta, and our distinguished founder, Mr. Prabhakar Singh, to please join me on stage. And together, let's light the lamp and see blessings. I welcome you all to please light the lamp, sir. Let's light the lamp and seek blessings for this event and everyone gathers here. Thank you so much, everyone. Before we begin with the conclave, I request the chief guest, Dr. S.P. Yadav, to please come up and say a few words. And before that, I would ask Sharad, sir, to please present him with a small token of our love. Thank you very much, Bhakti, for inviting me. Dignitaries on the dais, President IFS Association and Additional Director General of Wildlife, Sri Sushil Avasti, Secretary General IFS Association, Dr. Sunish Bhakshi, Sharadji, entire team of India Masterminds, senior officers from Indian Forest Service, and ladies and gentlemen. It's really a uh, very good, excellent initiative of India Masterminds and uh, Indian Forest Service Association, recognizing the hard work, the commitment, the passion of the frontline field officers who are devoting their life in protection and conservation of our natural resources, ecosystem, wildlife, forest. And, and let me tell you, the officers in the field, they fight every day battle. But there is hardly any recognition. Forest department, unka kaam aisa hai ki they are custodian of one of the largest natural resources. Unko forest ki land bachani hai, unko ped katne se bachana hai, unko wildlife ki raksha karni hai, unko communities ko bhi confidence me lena hai. Aur dusri taraf, there are land encroachers. Har kisi ko jameen chahiye. Muft mein mile to aur bhi achchi hai. Har kisi ko free mein timber chahiye. Har kisi ko free mein jalau lakdi chahiye. Natural resources hai. Unka 
इनडिस्क्रिमिनेट यूज चाहिए तो दे आर सो मेनी चैलेंजेस माइनिंग है इलीगल माइनिंग अगेन अ वेरी बिग इशू ये सब इशूज के जो चैलेंजेस हैं ये जो फ्रंट लाइन के हमारे फॉरेस्ट uh, ऑफिसर्स होते हैं उनको फेस करना पड़ता है यू वोंट बिलीव दैट एवरी ईयर मिनिमम टेन फ्रंट लाइन स्टाफ दे डाई इन द लाइन ऑफ ड्यूटी बहुत सारे तो ऐसे होते हैं जो तो जंगल की आग में जिंदा जल के मर जाते हैं जंगल को बचाने के लिए तो दे लीड अ वेरी वेरी टफ लाइफ एंड देर इज अ नीड इन द सोसाइटी टू रिकोगनाइज देयर कॉन्ट्रीब्यूशन इन कंजर्वेशन एंड प्रोटेक्शन ऑफ वाइल्ड लाइफ एंड अवर नेचुरल रिसोर्सेज एंड दे आर डूइंग इट फॉर इकोलॉजिकल सिक्योरिटी ऑफ द कंट्री दैट इज अगेन वेरी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट थिंग द बिगेस्ट सोर्स ऑफ लाइफ एयर एंड वाटर दे कम फ्रॉम फॉरेस्ट ओनली कोविड के समय हमने रियलाइज किया कि ऑक्सीजन की क्या इंपॉर्टेंस है बट दीज आर द पीपल हु आर प्रोटेक्टिंग द सोर्स द फैक्ट्रीज ऑफ ऑक्सीजन इन द नेचर सो देर फोर आई अप्रिशिएट द इनिशिएटिव ऑफ इंडिया मास्टर माइंड एंड इंडियन फॉरेस्ट सर्विस एसोसिएशन दैट दे हैव डेवलप्ड अ प्लेटफॉर्म लास्ट ईयर भी आपने एक सक्सेसफुल प्रोग्राम किया था और इस साल भी किया आई एम रियली हैप्पी विद दिस एंड कॉन्ग्रेचुलेट एवरी वन हु आर इन्वॉल्व इन दिस प्रोसेस Thank you very much. I wish all the success to the program. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Yadav, for your words of wisdom. Now let's get on with the conclave. Throughout the evening, we will delve into pressing issues facing forest and wildlife conservation, which will be followed by a piety break. Let's kick off our program with the first panel of a national conclave. Thank you so much, sir. Our first session brings forth the discussion on the topic promoting eco-friendly tourism that protects wildlife. IFS officers are the ultimate ecotourism guides. They ensure our wildlife safaris and nature trails are fun for us and kind to the planet. By protecting habitats and keeping wildlife friendly, they make sure every adventure helps both nature and local communities. They're crafting a tourism experience that not only conserves nature but also makes us fall even more in love with the great outdoors i invite mr gobin sagar bharadwaj additional director general ntca mr dhiraj pande chief conservator of forest kumau and ms malathi priya m chief conservator of forest bengaluru to join us on stage to discuss their insights and experiences in fostering sustainable tourism practices their expertise will provide valuable perspectives on how to balance environmental conservation with tourism development senior journalist ms mukta singh will be moderating this session i please welcome all of you to the stage sir i believe he's not present here yes I am extremely sorry for the delay. Okay, I invite Mr. D V S Khati, former P C C F and Hof Uttarakhand, to please come up on the stage and take part in this panel discussion. We shall now begin with the panel. Namaskar. 
Namaskar, good afternoon. I am Mukta Singh and uh, welcome to today's panel discussion on a very pertinent topic, Responsible Wildlife Tourism in India. And we are honored to have an esteemed panel with us to discuss this important uh, topic. And so please join me in welcoming our uh, distinguished guests. I think uh, Dr. Uh, Govind Sagarji is not here, so uh, Khati sir is here or at his place and uh, Dheeraj Pandey, Chief Conservator of Forests in Kumayu, and Malti Priyam, Chief Conservator of Forests in Bangalore. Thank you all for joining us. My suit. Okay. Before we start the discussion, I will tell you some of the things I will do, and I will give you some of the things I will give you some of the things I will give you some of the things. Even you will have this liberty that you can do your doubts or your thoughts with this esteemed panel, so you will get this opportunity. So thank you all for joining us again. First of all, okay, so let's start this discussion. As we all know, wildlife tourism in India is growing rapidly and with it the need for responsible practices to ensure that this tourism does not adversely affect our ecosystem. Sir, Khati sir, my first question to you, uh, being a retired IFS officer, you have an extensive experience in uh, managing wildlife resources. So, uh, can you start by explaining what responsible wildlife tourism means from a conservation perspective? Hello. Thank you. The responsible tourism is that it should not damage the environment. And the resource on which tourism is based should be uh, in perpetuity in future also that the next generation can see it. So any management of wildlife tourism or nature tourism should be that it should sustain ecologically, economically and socially. And uh, these are the three principles on which any responsible tourism is based. And uh, I personally feel that the, if you follow these princ three principles, uh, the wildlife tourism or nature tourism will survive for perpetuity for coming generations. Okay, sir, thank you for a comprehensive explanation. Very, actually, ye sawal man is likhiya tha, kyunki bohut kam log actually responsible wildlife tourism ka matlab samajh tha. We'll come over that again. Dheeraj, sir, as the chief conservator of forest in Kumayu, you oversee some of the most visited wildlife reserves in India. So what are the challenges that you face and how do you address them? See, the primary challenge which uh, we as forest officers uh, and especially the park managers um, in the state of Uttarakhand, if I talk about, uh, we face is, uh, you know, the implementation of the rules and regulations. The tourists which are visiting the forest areas, uh, especially the protected areas like Corbett and Rajaji Tiger Reserves, uh, they, uh, there are certain rules which needs to be enforced. Correct. So that is part one. Part two is, uh, as you've already mentioned, a very pertinent um, uh, topic about the responsible tourism. So there are certain guidelines, certain do's and don'ts. So that needs to be enforced. And for that, there are a lot of other measures which we take. Uh, I'll come to that uh, yeah. in a while. Uh, another uh, problem is, uh, you know, inculcating a sense of uh, uh, pride among the locals. That is uh, something which, where the tourists actually connect with the, uh, with the local people who are living in the fringe forest areas. See, when the tourists visit a forest area, it is the first interaction happens with the guide which is taking the tourist inside that, uh, the protected area or uh, the, the, the driver of the gypsy which is taking them it for a safari. So uh, training and motivating those um, uh, guides and drivers, you know, that is another important aspect because they are the first phase of interaction where actually, which actually happens with the tourist. And the tourist actually when it visits the park, and when it goes out of the park after four hours doing a safari in the tiger reserve or in any protected area, it carries that experience with him, you know, the kind of experience. So it's more about uh, feeling the forest uh, along with the, uh, uh, with the person which is taking uh, care of uh, the tourist in that sense. So uh, it's either way, you know, forcing rules, uh, making people aware uh, how to behave in the forest. Okay. Uh, uh, and also uh, training and actually, you know, um, uh, trying to, you know, uh, inculcate a sense of uh, belonging in the, uh, uh, in the tour, among the, uh, the gypsy drivers and also the guides, because they are the first phase uh, which a tourist actually sees and interacts with. Yeah, correct. Whatever you said, these are the significant challenges indeed. Malti ji, what do you say on this? You are in Mysore, right? Yeah. 
So what are the challenges, challenges that you face and like Dheeraji mentioned, do you agree with that? Of course, uh, what uh, Dheeraji mentioned, I also accept to all those challenges that we are facing. And uh, first of all, I would like to uh, just tell about today is a Forest Martyrs Day. On this particular day, we are celebrating this Eco Warrior Awards. I feel it's very pertinent and it's very uh, composing for me to have it in such an auspicious day. So uh, uh, I first of all congratulate to everybody who has take, taken this chance to conduct this program on such a day. And uh, yeah, coming to your point, uh, like as you told, yes, of course, conducting uh, eco-friendly tourism is a very, very challenging aspect, especially in the state of Karnataka, if you take where the place I come from is uh, Mysore. And you all know that uh, Mysore area has two major tiger reserves. One is Bandipur Tiger Reserve and another is Nagarhole Tiger Reserve. In both the tiger reserves, yes, we do face such kind of problem, uh, problems and we are trying to sort out. Like in state of Karnataka, we are doing a very responsible tourism. Uh, in the way like uh, we calculate the carrying capacity and as per the carrying capacity, we leave the vehicles inside. So that's very important when you talk about this uh, a sort of a, a, a good tourism, a responsible tourism. So from the department side itself, we take this initiative and we do less number of vehicles. We apply less number of vehicles as per the carrying capacity. And as uh, Mr. Dheeraj was mentioning, we are also doing many awareness programs across. Whoever the tourist comes inside the uh, national park area, we conduct many awareness programs for them and we tell them how you have to behave inside the forest area so that there's no pollution and uh, sort of a disturbance to the wild animals is minimal. That's what we are taking care of and we are going ahead with so many lots of other programs also like uh, I would like to quote about the Bandipur Yomitra which we have taken up recently and uh, bringing out uh, lots of awareness programs among the local students. They are very, very important for us and among the local Gram Panchayat members, villagers also. And we also connect with the local communities who are very, very important for us. Because most of the areas adjoining, there are around 316 villages which is adjoining to the Bandipur Tiger Reserve itself. So we have to take care of those local communities, bringing them as part of the responsible tourism is very, very important and we are doing that. Ma'am, uh, you mentioned a very important uh, thing, awareness program. So uh, are they mandatory for tourists and you think uh, that would help? Yeah, of course. Awareness program, see every scheme that we are uh, projecting, there should be an awareness program and the training programs because uh, what us, as uh, Mr. Dheeraj was mentioning about certain rules and regulations. How will the public know about those rules and regulations if you are not going to conduct such awareness programs? And I feel it's a... Uh, it's and very, the kind of programs important. we are having, I don't... Uh, do you think it's sufficient? I think we should have more and more awareness programs. Yeah, of course, that's what I'm, I'm uh, trying to bring about. As an example, I told about this Bandipu Yomitra program through Correct. which we are conducting the awareness to the students and villagers. I feel such sort of programs should come up all over the, all over the India as such if we have to make a very responsible tourism. That's what. So now coming to you again, I have asked you the first question that many people don't know about responsible wildlife tourism. So now coming, uh, uh, I mean talking from the people's perspective, if we talk about layman's language, so whenever you talk about wildlife tourism, the first thing that echoes in our mind is the only animal tiger. So uh, uh, celebrity uh, animals, that's the thing, and why not? We also copy them. But uh, why tiger? Why only tiger, Why only tiger, sir? The problem with the wildlife tourism in India is the star animal in star national parks. <laughs> you know, the tiger is the star animal and there are few national parks where everybody wants to visit, but nobody would like to go to Dampa in Mizoram or some other national parks. I will not mention their name. What she was telling that the responsible tourism, uh, we are uh, trying to promote it, but any good thing of today become bad thing of tomorrow. Correct. The first example I will give you the guides. Uh, service in Corbett Tiger Reserve. Corbett was the first tiger reserve where the guides were introduced by Mr. Elite A.S. Negi, who was direct field director. By the time I became director, they became nuisance. Surendra and Dheeraj are here. They know what are the problems they are facing it. So awareness is very good. Involvement of communities are good. When communities' interests are linked with the, uh, the tiger reserve or national park, they be it's become a problem. 
So how to break the nexus of uh, their business interest and awareness? This is the biggest thing we have to solve. Otherwise, uh, you will see that today the gypsy people are going on strike, tomorrow guides are going, somebody is locking the doors. I have faced all these things when I was director of COVID. So, uh, the, the best example probably is the Kanha Tiger Reserve. Sanjay is sitting here. Uh, the first awareness example the, where the interpretation centers, visitor centers were created was in, in Kanha, where the Center for Environment, Education, and in that time, and the field director of that, they initiated this uh, thing, where the orientation programs and other responsible tourism programs were introduced. And I hope till they are very successful. But you go to other Tiger Reserve, I will not mention their names. And sometimes it becomes so difficult. The moment they will see a tiger, it will surround it by gypsies. And I have photographs that at least 100 people are surrounding a tiger mm -hmm. or tigress, and so that animal is poorly sitting there. And sometimes they become violent. Then what is the response? So finally, you eliminate the animal. So my question is that if you are thinking of uh, responsible tourism, especially in wildlife, people should be responsible themselves also. Correct. It's not the duty of the department or uh, uh, the other people. You go anywhere uh, uh, in Africa and other places, nobody will behave like that we are doing in India, in Indian national parks. But uh, COVID, we tried to implement very uh, strict rules and uh, probably still they are continuing those rules. They are successful. Similarly, uh, we should also try to other national parks, but there's a big tour wildlife tourism lobby whose investment and other things are dependent on uh, seeing tigers and other things. Uh, the tiger becomes so, there are many other beautiful things. You know, we have a regular birding group coming from Europe to Corbett, and they were not going to see any tigers, and they are only concentrating on birds. So the unique birds in our national parks, and especially in different parts of the country, they are more, for them, they are more, were more important than the tiger. So you said the tiger, so I always say that this is the, uh, uh, the, the other problem is that the, there are many tiger reserves very close to New Delhi. <laughs> Every weekend you will get a call from Delhi that so and so is coming, we, we need five rooms. So you rooms, will not we believe we meet people, they yeah. just have one thing. Uh -huh. They are not seeing a tiger, they are not seeing a safari, but they are not seeing a tiger. They are only, you know, yeah. when that's they talk the, about the, wildlife the, tourism, they just think about tiger. So I have said that once again, so that you can tell us. I have said that you can tell us that our star animal and star national parks have become a star. और कॉर्बेट में एक प्रॉब्लम और है कॉर्बेट में और रेस्ट हाउसेस भी स्टार हो गए अपने कोई आप खेनानॉली में रुके अगर आप खेनानॉली रुके तो यू हैव स्टेटस वेरी हाई ओल्ड एफआरएच में रुके यू स्टेटस लिटिल लेसर बट यू आर दिस थिंग सो प्रॉब्ली वी हैव क्रिएटेड सर्ट एनवायरनमेंट स्पेशली इन सिटिंग इन प्लेसेस � Probably the Orientation Center and the Interpretation Center, like in Kanha, now many uh, the, the national parks and sanctuaries are adopting that thing. I saw in Periyar also. Uh, probably it will make difference, but it will not make difference which are adopted to old style of <laughs> wildlife tourism. So, sir, we expect that Tiger as a brand ambassador is needed to draw attention to the whole <laughs> universe. Yeah, Tiger is. The brand ambassador, probably we only advertise tigers, but not other wildlife sanctuary. When I was seeing the poster here, yeah, I was just discussing with Suran. Then when I saw the elephant, African elephant in the poster, I was really surprised. <laughs> <laughs> so we, I said that if you want uh, the, I was, the day before yesterday, I was in Tamil Nadu in Chennai and went to the tourism office. Uttarakhand Tourism Department was promoting uh, the African uh, rhinos and African elephants in the poster to come to Delhi. So probably we are also not aware, government is not aware that which animals we have. If we have tiger, is, India is lucky. We have the highest population of tiger in the world and its credit goes to the forest department to protect them and to the people who are living all around. But uh, uh, I hope there are many other animals also, which have... I have said, sir, they will think the rest of the animals. That's what I said. Look, for a snow leopard, for a Himanchal or a Leh, people go to the winter. Winter tourism has started to see a snow leopard. Similarly, uh, the, if you see a rare animal like uh, uh, the Makhor, other animal in Jammu and Kashmir, Makhor is such a rare animal. See that beautiful animal. It has its own, own beauty. Even people have not seen that in, 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 in zoological parks. Marko, if you look at the wild, you can see type of beautiful animal. Hai. And uh, elephant is equally beautiful. I mean, your main photo is the Aslam Saab's photograph of the elephant. Ka. What a beauty it is from the Covid. 
Malti ji, uh, we just got to know that, uh, recently we got to know that uh, there are some apps also which gives us information about uh, tourism and do's and don'ts. Of course, uh, there are many apps as far as Karnataka is concerned. Yes, we are having uh, many apps and even the online. Uh, we have our own uh, tourism department, uh, Karnataka uh, Forest Department, tourism related uh, website also, through which we can uh, see ma many of the things that's happening in and around. And what are all the areas which you can visit? As Sir was telling, there we used to uh, depict not only the tiger, the other important species which are present over in our forest area, that is also being done. That's also, it's okay. taking place. So now, uh, Dheera Ji, you are sitting very quiet. Isn't this contradictory that on one hand, we are trying to promote wildlife tourism, but on the other hand, isn't this impacting the wildlife behavior or disturbing the animals? So is there some balance we need to strike? Look, the question you've asked has been so relevant and there is no more relevance than any other thing that can happen in today's preparation, if we talk about it. जैसे मैंने शुरू में भी बताया कि जो टूरिस्ट आता है विजिट करने प्रोटेक्टेड एरिया में वो बहुत राउडी बिहेवियर होता है उसका तो हमारी कोशिश ये होती है कि उसको हम ओरिएंटेशन करें अन पार्क में अंदर जाने से पहले सो वी ट्राई एंड यू नो लेट देम नो व्हाट आर द रूल्स एंड रेगुलेशन दे हैव टू फॉलो इन उसका कारण है क्योंकि जो आपने बिहेवियर की बात करी वो डेफिनेटली बिकॉज अगर टाइगर की साइटिंग होती है कहीं पर और एक नहीं दो नहीं वहाँ पर दस जिप्सी या पंद्रह जिप्सी उसका रास्ता रोकती हैं तो एक तरीके से टाइगर एजिटेट होता है इरिटेट होता है या एलिफेंट है आप उसके बहुत पास चले जाते हैं वो एक डोसाइल जानवर है वो अपनी सीमाएं जानता है देन एनिमल ऑल्सो रिस्पेक्ट योर डिस्टेंस राइट बट अगर आप बहुत उसके पास जाते हैं तो फिर वो एजिटेट होता है आपकी तरफ चार्ज करता है और जनरली ये फोटोग्राफर्स के साथ बहुत मैंने देखा है कॉम्पिट में फोटोग्राफर्स आते थे वो प्रोवोक करते थे टाइगर जिप्सी ड्राइवर्स को कि वो पास में जाएँ टाइगर के ताकि वो इरीटेट हो और उनको अच्छे शॉट्स मिले यू नो वो एग्रेसिव शॉट्स लेने के लिए या फॉर दैट मैटर बर्ड नेस्ट है उसको डिस्टर्ब करते हैं बर्ड कॉल्स टूरिस्ट प्ले करते थे पहले अब तो खैर रूल्स बहुत हमने स्ट्रिक्ट कर दिए सो व्हाट वी डिड वाज वी स्टार्टेड यू नो जीपीएस इन ऑल द जिप्सीज वी इंस्टॉल जीपीएस सो वी वर एबल टू ट्रैक द कॉन्ग्रीगेशन ऑफ जिप्सीज वी वर आल्सो एबल टू ट्रैक द ऑफ ऑफ जिप्सीज द स्पीड लिमिट इज टू बी अडियर टू तो ये रेड फ्लैग्स हमारे पास ऑनलाइन आ जाते थे हमें पता चल जाता था देन वी टुक स्ट्रिक्ट एक्शन तो वो एक चीज़ रेगुलेट डेफिनेटली हुई है दूसरा जो मैंने पहले भी बताया बिहेवियर जानवरों का बदलता है चेंज होता है अगर वो आप उसे बहुत ज़्यादा उसके पास जाते हैं उसे परेशान करने की कोशिश करते हैं अब हमने ओरिएंटेशन वर्कशॉप्स कराए जो हमारे ड्राइवर्स और गाइड्स थे उनके लिए और वो एक बहुत अच्छा एक पहल रही क्योंकि उससे एक लगभग साढ़े सात सौ ड्राइवर्स और गाइड्स मिला के लगभग उनकी वर्कशॉप्स रहीं और उनको भी हमने बताया वो कहाँ गलतियाँ करते हैं We also started a feedback mechanism from the tourists so that we get online feedback of uh, tourists who are visiting the forest areas and coming out of the tiger reserve so that we get to know that we have to improve where So it's a constant process which is there. But definitely tigers, which is a solitary animal, is made in our territory. It was a concept in our mind. And in the corvette, we have seen all the myths in one way because males were two or three males living in one side of the territory. फीमेल साथ में रह रही हैं साथ में हंट कर रहे हैं पैक की तरह जैसे लायंस हंट करते हैं उस तरीके का बिहेवियर भी हमने देखा है और ये एक बार नहीं ये लगातार अलग अलग डिफरेंट जोन्स में इस तरीके का बिहेवियर हमने देखा है टाइगर्स के साथ सो डेफिनेटली देर इज अ बिहेवियर विच इज ये आपने बहुत अच्छी बात बताई बहुत बढ़िया इनिशिएटिव है लेकिन अपने देश में तो एक परेशानी है कि आप लाख नियम कानून बना लीजिए तोड़ने वाले भी बहुत हैं खैर मालती जी हम ये देखा गया कि कितनी बार ऐसा हुआ कि एनिमल्स ने टूरिस्ट पर अटैक किया है आपने तो इसके लिए स्पेशल टास्क फोर्स भी बनाई थी तो आपको लगता है कि डिड इट हेल्प एन If it, if yes, then it should be replicated at other places also. Of course, uh, like uh, in our state of Karnataka, we have formed a, a task force, yes, of course, and that's mainly for the elephant task force and the leopard task force we have created, especially when there is a conflict issue. For that purpose, we have created. Inside the tiger area, yes, we have created the special tiger protection force. Of course, they come into picture whenever there is some sort of a problem. But I'll tell you, uh, maybe till now, there is uh, no such incidents have happened in the tourism area where the tourists have been attacked by the wild animals. No such incidents have taken place. But still, we have a force at hand, as you are telling. When there is a need, then sure, we will be rushing and helping them out. 
बट नो सच इंसिडेंट स्टिल डेट ग्रेट सर क्योंकि इसके बारे में बात करें तो आजकल ह्यूमन और वाइल्ड लाइफ कॉन्फ्लिक्ट जो है बहुत ज़्यादा देखने को मिल रहा है आए दिन कहीं ना कहीं से कुछ कुछ खबरें आती रहती हैं एंड वी ऑल नो दैट इट कैन नॉट बी इराडिकेटेड कम्प्लीटली बट येस वी कैन डेफिनेटली मिनिमाइज द इम्पैक्ट तो आपको क्या लगता है क्या इसका सोल्यूशन है हाउ टू क्रिएट अ हारमोनियस को एग्जिस्टेंस बिटवीन ह्यूमन एंड वाइल्ड लाइफ probably the uh, access to uh, you know informations uh, present time is more responsible for uh, man wildlife conflict uh, human wildlife interaction now people start saying this is not conflict is the interaction if you remember that how many um, uh, human beings were killed by the champao tigers 250 in india and before that she killed more than that in nepal so that time if you just guesstimate that around 400 or 500 people were killed by the tigers and finally she was eliminated by uh, uh, covid and i was chief wildlife warden and pcc of uttarakhand for 5 years and within my tenure of 5 years i gave permission to kill 18 uh, uh, leopard uh, two tigers and uh, we trapped many leopards also and especially in all the 13 districts of uttarakhand we have such a massive problem of leopard killing uh, uh, especially children attacking them lifting school going children and there was lot of agitation i was uh, a case was filed against me uh, in the human right court that uh, i am not doing anything to protect the children and uh, the uh, so i started giving frequent orders to eliminate the animal or trap the animal the animal activists filed a case against me in the high court that i am killing animals so it's a you know situation one side is saying that save the animals and other side is saying save the children this is in happening and uh, uh, especially in uttarakhand uh, you remove any animal you kill animal you trap an animal it will be replaced by within 15 days or 20 days by another uh, any animal and uh, uh, the other problem i in hills which i personally feel that because i belong to uh uttarakhand and i have uh, lived in my childhood in anital and other areas so my problem is that earlier small uh, prey base like ghural cock uh, the barking deer and people used to abandon male calf of buffaloes in the wild and the leopard was feeding on that today hardly we have any prey base left in the hills and the male calf are also going to Um, beef market in uh, places like this thing so there is hardly anything they are taking either your wild dog or young children uh, i was uh, a dfo garhwal and just below the circuit house in podi and uh, 630 the mother was boiling eggs and the, the girl was sitting there there was a dog the leopard appeared from nowhere and wanted to kill the dog but dog was smart it left the place and the, the, the child was lifted from that 630 in the evening so i went there and we couldn't trace the body next day full eaten body of the, uh, the girl was uh, traced so my uh, the suggestion for the people is that if you are looking for uh, solution to the especially uh, leopard problem in, in any state we have to either increase the prey base in the hills or at least like sundarbans now they have the uh, the plastic net all around the villages at least the anim- this first obstruction and is not very expensive suppose in hills we have four or five uh, houses in a, a small hamlets so we can have that at least six feet tall it will it will protect the animal from entering into the village and that would be very successful i tried my time that at least ex- as an experiment we can do in some villages but i don't know whether they are doing it or not and so the kind of experience you have aapki kahaniyan aisi hain ki shayad waqai hum logon ke paas waqt ki kami hai warna hum log sunte hi reh jayenge uh, एक बार फिर इसके लिए कुछ और प्रोग्राम करेंगे और मौका ढूंढेंगे धीरज जी ये पॉइंट क्योंकि मैं मिस नहीं करना चाहती हूँ शुड देर बी अ डेटा बेस आपको लगता है डेटा बेस या एक रेटिंग सिस्टम होना चाहिए फॉर द टूरिस्ट दैट कैन गिव अ बेटर अंडरस्टैंडिंग टू द ऑफिशल्स टू इंश्योर ऑल दैट ऑल द गाइडलाइंस हैव बिन मेट और जो नहीं कर रहा है उसके लिए एंट्री डिनाई होनी चाहिए हाँ ये बात आपकी बिल्कुल सही है और हमने प्रयास ये किया है जैसा मैंने बताया हमने वी डिज़ाइन द फीडबैक सिस्टम जहाँ पर हमें टूरिस्ट का फीडबैक मिलता है गाइड्स और ड्राइवर्स के बारे में और गाइड्स और ड्राइवर्स का फीडबैक मिलता है टूरिस्ट के बारे में हमारे डेस्क बने हुए हैं जहाँ पे कंप्लेन uh, की जा सकती है अगर टूरिस्ट का राउडी बिहेवियर हो और हम उन्हें बैन भी करते हैं वी हैव इशूड लास्ट ईयर अराउंड टेन डिफेमेशन नोटिस टू डिफरेंट टूरिस्ट फॉर डिफरेंट ऑब्जेक्शनेबल कॉन्टेंट्स विद दे पोस्टेड ऑन वेदर ऑन ट्विटर और ऑन अदर सोशल मीडियाज 
uh, we got apology, uh, unconditional apology letters, we have that, we publicize that also. That is part one. Part two is obviously, you know, unless ki aap jo, mein bar bar wahi cheez kehta hon ki hamein communities ke saath engage hona bhoat zaroori important hai. Aur unko humko ye, kyunki humare jo drivers hain aur guides hain, wo sab communities ke members hain. To unko hum log motivate karein, unko hum log samjhaen ki aap humara chehra hain to public ke saamne. पार्क डायरेक्टर को कोई नहीं जानता है जो टूरिस्ट आ रहा है उसको पता भी नहीं कौन है वो उसे तो वो ड्राइवर और गाइड जो उसे चार घंटे घुमा रहा है उस जिप्सी में उसको तो वो इंटरेक्शन मिल रहा है वेदर इट वो उसे टाइगर दिखा पा रहा है या उसे फॉरेस्ट तो इन कॉर्बेट वी से नो इट्स मोर अबाउट फीलिंग द टाइगर देन सींग द टाइगर बिकॉज इतनी सारी चीज़ें हैं कॉर्बेट में देखने के लिए आई हैव हैड एक्सपीरियंस ऑफ मीटिंग पीपल हु बीन कमिंग फ्राम फार अवे प्लेस लाइक यू एस एंड कैनेडा एंड यूरोप जस्ट टू सी आई बिल उनको पता है उत्तराखंड में दो या तीन जगह उन्हें एबिस बिल दिखेगा और वो वहीं आते हैं या ऑटर खींचने के लिए वो फोटो खींचने के लिए आएंगे उन्हें टाइगर सामने से जाएगा भी दे आर नॉट बॉर्डर्ड सच काइंड ऑफ टूरिस्ट आल्सो वी गेट बट दे आर अ रेयरिटी ज़्यादातर टूरिस्ट केवल टाइगर की वजह से आता है और टाइगर के और के पीछे वो सारी चीज़ें छुप जाती हैं जो और बहुत इंपॉर्टेंट चीज़ें हैं और उसमें मैं ये अपॉर्चुनिटी लेकर ये भी कहना चाहता हूँ ये जो आपने प्रोग्राम किया है टू रिकगनाइज पीपल हुए बीन वर्किंग टायरलेसली जिनको हम शायद उतनी उतनी महत्व दे नहीं पाते क्योंकि ये सब चीज़ें जंगल के अंदर होती हैं जो ये काम कर रहे हैं जो मेहनत कर रहे हैं वो बाहर नहीं रिफ्लेक्ट होती है कहीं ना कहीं तो एक बहुत अच्छा एक एफर्ट है और आई वुड लाइक टू कॉन्ग्रेचुलेट द होल टीम बिहाइंड दिस एफर्ट एंड ऑल्सो आई एफ एस एसोसिएशन इज टेकन अ वंडरफुल स्टेप क्योंकि वो रिकोगशन पर मिलना बहुत ज़रूरी है इस थैंक यू सो मच सर एंड वी रियली अप्रीशिएट हैट्स ऑफ टू द होल टीम लास्ट question malti ji i i don't you feel it's high time to move towards compassionate responsible wildlife tourism yeah of course uh, i do accept uh, that one uh, see the way we feel as a humans how do we feel that's more important the wildlife will also feel the same way so we have to be compassionate enough and uh, uh, it should be a responsible tourism and it's uh, high time and i think uh, it's a long way to go we have uh, we have i think we have started a step ahead in creating the responsible tourism and i think a long way to go ahead and we will surely together joining hands we can bring a responsible tourism in each and every park that's present in our country that's yes, what sustainability and uh, wildlife yes. should go hand in hand, hand, in hand. so uh, sure. last question main aap sab se vaada khilaf hi kar rahi hu maine kaha tha aapko bhi mauka milega sawal puchne ka but sorry bhakti ne mana kar diya hai so, आप उससे फिर उससे बात करनी पड़ेगी सर आखिरी सवाल आप तीनों से मेरा कि जस्ट वन सजेशन फ्रॉम ईच ऑफ यू कि कैन रिस्पॉन्सिबल टूरिज्म बिकम्स अ रियलिटी इन इंडिया या व्हाई नॉट दैट्स व्हाट आर एटीट्यूड एंड माइंडसेट विद दिस वी कैन रियली ब्रिंग अ रिस्पॉन्सिबल टूरिज्म इन आर कंट्री लाइक इंडिया थैंक यू बिल्कुल सर एक मिनट माई नेम इज अनूप बाधवा आई एम फॉर्मर प्रिंसिपल चीफ कंजर्वेटर ऑफ फॉरेस्ट महाराष्ट्र वर्क एज जॉइंट डायरेक्टर प्रोजेक्ट टाइगर ऑल्सो वे बैक इन नाइन्टी थ्री सिंस लेडी चीफ कंजर्वेटर इज देयर सो आई वॉन्ट टू टेक यू ऑल टू दिस्टोरिकल परस्पेक्टिव ऑफ टूरिज्म एंड टाइगर रिजर्व हाउ इट इज स्टार्टेड it was one of the very first steering committee of project tiger meetings in 1978 and it relates to bandipur bandipur is in the center a very renowned uh, member of the steering committee professor c m krishnan was highly opposed even to the research work in any tiger reserve and bandipur was the focal point because their research was going on on wild dogs so he was deadly against it that even for research work even men on foot should not be allowed to the tiger reserves that was the situation another view point was professor madhav gadgil he was also a member of steering committee he was of the opinion that no we should allow the research work in the project tigers otherwise how come we know about the progress and the ultimate management inputs to be given to the tiger reserves so that was his view point 
three meetings were held from 78 to 79 and this issue was the bone of contention and was highly argued between the two. But ultimately, the chairman of the steering committee, that time was Professor H.M. Patel, he was Minister of Agriculture. Actually, who struck, struck the balance saying that man and animal should be in coexistence and with mutual respect, they should keep the distance. But after all, animals are also for humans. So that's how the research work, not only the research work in the Project Tiger started and that went on, but also it became the first guideline for tourism also in the Tiger Reserves that we should have a regulated, sustainable tourism in Tiger Reserve with mutual respect between the animal and the humans. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you, everyone, for such an insightful conversation. And the most important thing from this discussion is that before talking about responsible wildlife tourism, we have to behave responsibly. Because what will the department do, what will the government do, this is a long time ago. But what are we doing? We have to first focus on that. So thank you so much, everybody, for joining us. And thank you, everyone. What an engaging conversation. Thank you so much. I would request Mr. Khati to please stay for the second session also. So following the tremendous success of last year's inaugural events, we are thrilled to have the opportunity to recognize even more inspiring eco-warriors who are making a difference across India. Let's take a peek at last year's awards and conclave recap. In 2023, a powerful movement was born. Indian Masterminds and the IFS Association joined forces to shine a spotlight on the unsung heroes who risk everything to protect our forests and environment. From the shadows of their tireless efforts emerged the first ever Eco Warrior Awards, an unprecedented celebration of courage, innovation and sacrifice. The 2023 Eco Warrior Awards was a celebration of India's most dedicated environmental champions. The event was a milestone in our journey to protect the planet, beginning with a dynamic national conclave that set the tone for action, where forest officers, environmentalists, and thought leaders came together. Adding visual splendor to the event was a remarkable photo exhibition featuring the creations of forest officers and renowned photographer Akash Das. Each photograph was more than art, from the majestic Bengal tiger to the serene landscapes of the Western Ghats. Our chief guests, Honorable Shri Bhupendra Yadav, Minister of Environment, Forest and Climate Change, and Shri Ashwini Kumar Chaube, Minister of State for Environment, Forest and Climate Change, graced the occasion with their presence and inspiring words. As the evening descended, the spotlight turned to the night's true heroes, the award recipients. The 2023 Eco Warrior Awards honored those who have made extraordinary contributions to environmental conservation. From innovative use of technology to fearless efforts, reclaiming over 7,000 hectares of encroached forest land, each winner stood as a beacon of hope. The event also featured a mesmerizing sand art performance by the talented Nitish Bharti, who brought to life the story of our forests and wildlife, captivating the audience with his artistry. These eco-warriors are more than just protectors. They are the driving force behind a sustainable future. Now, with the second edition of the Eco-Warrior Awards, we aim to carry their legacy forward. Together, we can ensure that the Earth's beauty endures for generations to come. Next, we will explore how our IFS officers are involved in managing the fragile ecosystem in our upcoming panel. 
Eco warriors in India are vital in managing fragile ecosystems and tackling environmental issues through reforestation, wildlife protection, and pollution control. They lead efforts to restore degraded lands, create wildlife corridors, and promote sustainable practices. Their work helps preserve biodiversity, combat climate change, and foster environmental stewardship, ensuring a healthier planet for future generations. We are delighted to invite retired IFS officer, Mr. DVS Khati, Mr. Rajiv Tiwari, Additional Principal Chief Conservator of Forest, AGMIT, and Joint Secretary, Women and Child Development, and Mr. Prem Kumar Vislawat, the founder and CEO of Maru Drones, to the stage for the second panel session of our conclave. The discussion will focus on the crucial topic of managing fragile ecosystems. Your insights and expertise will greatly contribute to understanding and addressing the challenges in preserving these delicate environments while balancing development and conservation. Welcome to the stage, sir. Senior journalist Mr. Manoj Singh will be moderating this session. Thank you, Muktaji, for this lovely conversation, very insightful. I'm sure we all have gained some knowledge from your co previous conversation. And I'll request everybody present here to click some pictures and post it on social media so that a larger audience can benefit from the conversation we are having right now. Now, social media, we are talking about social media. We are talking about social media. Most of us go to go to the house and we are going to go to the house. And we are going and we always try to you know click pictures whether we are in jungle or registan mein jaye ya kahin samandar mein jaye aur sabse badi priority hoti hai ki hum badhiya se badhiya picture click kare and with a scenic you know background behind us uh, but do we really care about the ecosystem there i mean the, the the kind of scenic beauty you see in your backdrop do you know there are many people i mean there 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 are millions of uh, species they are part of that entire ecosystem. And when we leave that place, because that is not our home, we just don't care about it. We just care about that one lovely picture. So this conversation will be helpful for all of you. And I believe after this conversation, when you go out and try to make a real or try to make a picture, you will know that wherever you are standing, वहाँ पर वो आपका घर नहीं लेकिन कितने millions species का वो घर है और उसकी जिम्मेदारी आपकी है। Thank you all for here. So sir, सबसे पहले मैं आपसे शुरू करना चाहूँगा। सबसे पहले तो ये बताइए खाती सर कि what is this fragile ecosystem? I mean, we understand लू ऊपर ऊपर से कि कई तरह के ecosystem हैं और उसमें कई तरह के species हैं। लेकिन जो हमें आँखों से दिखता है वो हमारे जानवर दिखते हैं। But there are species which we don't see actually and we don't care. So ये fragile ecosystem है क्या? मेरे ख्याल से पूरा universe ही fragile है। अगर आप इस इतना बड़ा universe है जिसमें हम लोग रहते हैं या उसमें से एक छोटा सा एक earth है, उसमें भी earth में कितना portion आदमी रहता है? डेजर्ट में आदमी नहीं रहता, उसके बाद सी में नहीं रहता, स्नो कैप्स में नहीं रहता है। एक सर्टेन मिनिमम परसेंटेज ऑफ लैंड इस अवेलेबल फॉर ह्यूमन बीइंग, एंड दैट टू एक्सप्लोज़न ऑफ पापुलेशन लाइक इन इंडिया, चाइना, बट मैनी अदर कंट्रीज़ दे आर स्टिल लाइट अफ्रीका इस विदाउट it will become fragile. And if you remain within that thing, it will remain intact. So my definition of fragile ecosystem is just, which is sustainable and uh, is, is within the carrying capacity. So the following question is, how do you make this industry, the tourism and uh, industry balance? Okay. How do we balance between the tourism and the conservation and protect that fragile ecosystem? You know, I was reading a book written by a very famous German author. I don't just forget his name. He called that we have adopted a banana attitude. Build anything, nothing near anywhere. Banana attitude. One is like that we will not do anything. We will leave the uh, e ecosystem to survive like that. 
uh, like the, uh, the, the IUCN say that the first category of the national parks and sanctuaries where no human beings' presence is allowed. Second is that where we'll allow certain type of uh, human presence. And third is that we'll have an interaction. So we can have uh, the, uh, the adoption of the carrying capacity. You know, like the cities now, instead of Bangalore, now we are having multi-story buildings. And agriculture now, instead of extensive agriculture, we are going for in intensive ex agri uh, agriculture, though it's also had some uh, negative points. So sustainability can be increased. Similarly, you are talking about the tourism. Instead of asking each and every individual to take its gypsy inside the park area, suppose we take a mass tourism vehicle like a canter or raft type of thing inside, so capacity will increase. And uh, suppose allowing the day visitors inside, like COVID, we don't allow day visitors in COVID, uh, the Dhikala area, tourism zone area. So the number of uh, rooms are the carrying capacity of that area. But there are certain national parks, they have fixed the number of 30 canters, 40 canters, and sometimes you see the kiosks inside the park areas. So it's basically the uh, rules which are, I can maintain the system uh, into, from a fragile to this thing. And, uh, and, and it should be a dynamic process. It's not necessarily that suppose you have fixed this thing, it will not. If it can come down, it can go up. So, I mean, since you, uh, government knows what are the challenges, and uh, in general, people have some understanding of uh, environment and sustainability. What are the policy changes required in this sector? I mean, do you need some? Do you feel that there is a strong need of uh, some, you know, uh, revolutionary policy changes? You know, we have stopped uh, the holistic planning, like the district is the unity of administration in a state. And if district plan includes the, the sustainability or the conservation plan of that area, definitely uh, it will protect that. Otherwise, what left department is, government, government left department is doing right is not aware of that. I, I remember when I joined service, my first boss told me that the forest division's boundaries in the hill state, in the states, in the, uh, the districts and hills were not confined to the district boundaries. They were according to the catchment area of the river. Mm. So the, suppose it's the, uh, the catchment area of Bhagirathi or the Alakananda or uh, some other river. So one division used to manage that whole catchment. But with the advent of the now the district planning system, we they confined the divisions into districts. Now we one DFO is in charge of one district, and the what is happening in the other district, he is not aware. So the same catchment is getting different treatments. Suppose in this area it's a protection working cycle, in other district it is not. So th th this type of things we have to think and we have to have a holistic pattern. I hope that we should manage the forest according to catchment, especially in the fragile areas, not as district boundaries. This is one of the, uh, the, the district changes I want. Second thing is that uh, we have to look for uh, those uh, actions or those uh, development actions which should not damage them in permanently. Rajiv ji, you're with a uh, woman in child development uh, Department. No, no. Huh. I am so, not with Women uh, Child Development. Uh, I, am, uh, I am with National Commission for Civil Caste. Okay, so uh, thank you, Varun, for providing me this wonderful research. <laughs> <laughs> so, sir, I mean, uh, how do we inculcate, uh, you know, uh, knowledge or you know, a serious understanding about sustainability as a holistic topic among youths and our, in our family? See, to understand sustainability, uh, first let's understand the, uh, our ecosystem itself. Mm. Uh, you are running a video on the screen. You see the landslides, you see the floods there. Do we understand the landslides in totality? What are the reasons? In forest, we, uh, we think that uh, forests are solution of, to all the problems. Does it really happen? What are the limits and controls of the forest within which it has its positive impact. It's important to understand that. Uh, coming, uh, if, if you're talking about the fragile, fragile ecosystem, let's talk about the landslides. It's so a part, part of the fragile ecosystem. Uh, if you have a wonderful forest ecosystem, forest land use, if you clear fill the forest, what, what impact will it have on the landslides? It will have shallow landslides. Shallow landslides means limited up to the root zone, correct? You cut the roads on the hills, 
then you have many landslides whose depth is limited to the cut, depth of the cutting of the road. But if you talk of the deep landslides, forests don't have much role as far as deep landslides are, are concerned, which depends on the geology of the area and more importantly, the subsoil moisture and the rainfall conditions. So if, if you have perpetual and sustainable very high rainfall and subsoil moisture region is very high, you have deep landslides. So for, it's important to understand that forest works under certain limits and controls. And as a technical officer, we need to understand what are the limits and controls within which that forest will, will, be, will have beneficial use. So now since we see a lot of development happening in and around the entire, uh, you know, actually the mountain area, and uh, we are very much, you know, uh, passionate about this all weather roads and all weather infrastructure. So what is the, I mean, how does it uh, affect the entire uh, ecosystem? And is it, uh, it is, is it really, uh, you know, uh, sorry, is it, is it really sustainable to, you know, think even about, you know, having an all weather infrastructure, you know, going across uh, length and breadth of? See, as far as government is concerned, connectivity to the public is very important. As far as ecologist is concerned, it has got its own detrimental effect, impact. So, uh, for if you for a hydrological angle, if you if you cut a road in uh, in uh, on a hill, its adverse impact on the hydrology of the area is as such that, that whole of the uh, whole of the hill has been denuded, denuded from the forest. So suddenly you have a rush of water, suddenly you have a lot of runoff, and and a lot of soil erosion as well. So it has its detrimental effect. It is not certainly not sustainable. Sir, your thoughts? Sir. You know, the, uh, the problem with the, what you said, landslides and floods and other things, which Rajiv was also mentioning, is that the, uh, the approach what we have taken, that definitely connectivity is required. Country is more, especially in Chardam, uh, the areas, border road areas, government is weighing. Country is more important. The security of country is that other side they have pled to and they have brought road up to the border, Indian, uh, our soil. And we are still taking four to five days to reach uh, uh, at the border of our uh, other country. So definitely it is required. But certain uh, checks are very required. That uh, uh, working in the, uh, the forest department, I found that the, probably the most negligible part for this is the uh, grasslands. Grasslands absorb more water than forest areas, especially the alpine meadows. And see the conditions of alpine meadows we have, how we are keeping our alpine meadows in the name of tourism or medicinal plant extractions that uh, we have damaged the, uh, uh, the one of the basic uh, water, the, the bloating paper of uh, the ecosystem. Second thing, what I found that the, uh, the, the due to climate change, many glaciers are melting and breaking their parts and it is coming into the high altitude lakes and their burns are breaking and it is creating sudden uh, uh, the floods in the area. What happened in uh, Kedarnath and last time Vishnu Prayag and Joshimat areas that the portion of glacier fell down in the uh, high altitude lakes and the water came out in a gush and killed so many people. The third is the in development of infrastructure. If you see uh, I uh, studied in Nanital, and if you are coming from Nanital to Haldwani, I don't know how many people know the geography of that area. There was only one landslide area, which was known as Gulab Ghati between Kartburdam and Ranipur, uh, And when we in the schools and we are waiting for parents to come, suppose they are not coming to pick us, it means that Gulab Ghati is closed. That's the only point in the 40, 35 kilometer, 40 kilometer area, only one landslide zone. But widening of roads, that was a British time made road. Eh? And widening of roads and using of blasts, blastings, you know, the, the border roads, how they are using the dynamites to uh, break the rocks. Probably that's the most dangerous thing we have created. And uh, uh, today the situation is that, that we have many developed many uh, points. When I was DFO in Garhwal, that time hardly we had one or two points between from Rishikesh to Badrinath. Now we have multiple places where the, uh, the landslides are coming out. 
And I saw in China, I don't know how, uh, as an expert, I'm not an engineer, Rajiv is an engineer, he will be able to better than me, that they are using the tunnels now. They want to keep the road straight. They said that wasters of time in making bends and U-turn bends and other things, instead of keep it straight, it will certainly take a lot of capital, but in future it will save your petrol, it will save your this thing, future it will save them. Love for train, the railways in Uttarakhand from Karnaprayag up to from Rishikesh to Karnaprayag, they are using tunnels and this thing. I don't know how effective it was, it will be. And similarly, they are using now the different technology for making the electric, hydroelectric plant by run of the river projects where they are taking the water in the tunnels instead of making a huge dam. And uh, so far, their adverse impacts are not uh, very uh, uh, you know, uh, severe or, uh, or visible in Garhwal area. Uh, there can be a solution like similar that you reduce the damage to this thing and especially reduce the, uh, the capillary water system in the earth. So definitely we want, uh, best of the both words, we want uh, uh, development and also conserve the uh, ecosystem. Definitely. So, Mr. Kumar, Sri Kumar, Prem Kumar ji, sorry. Uh, I just see, I just saw your, you know, wonderful drones outside there in the, uh, in the lobby area. So, uh, I mean, I'm totally not aware. What do you do with that? <laughs> Um, so I have a small uh, one minute video. Uh, can the AV team, so that more action what we do if you could see okay. will be a Great. better action. <laughs> I mean, we can understand a bit of it. So please explain to the audience, how does it help to the, you know, to protect the entire ecosystem there? Uh, so basically, uh, we were studying in, uh, in Assam and IIT Kohati, and we see a lot of forest fires happen every year. And, um, the, and we've been listening every time to deforestation very often. So we thought our majority of area is not accessible. And, peop and we saw the plantation, we were doing with helicopters or we were doing with a community where throwing the seed balls as a manually when they were passing the forest areas and everything. We thought, can we increase the green cover percentage? Was only the thought process when we started back in 2018 this as an initiative. And then we saw uh, majority of the forest areas, um, they don't allow the, the community at present because of the lot of the challenges. So, and a lot of wild animals are there and everything. So, we initiated this and we did one, two forests first. Then we understood it has to be at a scale. Then we started seeing the larger vision, saying that can we plant a one billion, 100 crore plantation by 2030. That's where we started working with the CSR companies 
who can support us or forest officers who are proactive, who are supporting towards reforestation, afforestation activities, and we started working. So where we are bringing the local communities to make the seed balls or NGOs which are working it, and using a drone we identified deforested or the, the, the places where they have to be planted, and we were using this uh, at a scale. So um, this year we stayed, did Bihar, Maharashtra, a couple of places we are doing it. And um, so we are trying to reach as many, because definitely we have a gratitude towards all the IFS officers who are giving a lot of efforts. We are becoming enabler for them through technology like a drone to support them in scaling or increasing clean cover in the country. Lovely. So, uh, sir, Rajiv, sir, I mean, technology is one thing that can bring uh, a lot of disruptive changes in both in attitude and on ground action. So, uh, does government has any 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 plan, any 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 policy to uh, introduce more technology, something beyond drone? I don't know now what, but I remember then when I was very young, the and when I joined service after that also, we started mechanized planting in Tarai areas of Uttar Pradesh. That time, present Uttarakhand area was part of Uttar Pradesh, and uh, we created plantation divisions by using, uh, you know, mechanized ways. The tractors were imported from uh, uh, Czechoslovakia and the Russian tractors. The caterpillars from US came and we clear felled all the, you know, the mixed forest because it has no timber values. And we introduced plantations of eucalyptus, poplar, islanders, species which were not native species. and. Uh, almost the whole ecosystem. That was the most diverse forest areas and prime habitat for tiger and other biodiversity because most diverse, but unfortunately it has no timber value. So that area uh, was finished by the technology. I hope technology is required, but to, not to the extent that we damage the ecosystem. Right. So uh, Prem, since you come from the you know startup ecosystem and you are part of the technology, uh, what are the other technologies do you think, I mean, you must have met several people, what are the other technologies do you think can help uh, this cause? Um, one of the biggest aspect is the surveillance. Because what we see is, today surveillance as a technology has uh, scaled a lot. You don't, they're like very, you can fly at very high height, like 100 meters, more than 50 meters, you don't understand any noise of the drone. And you can do this, uh, the surveillance aspect, it can be an animal or unauthorized person, is once an, or um, doing a regular uh, border checks where the forests are in thousands and uh, hectares, having uh, hundreds of people monitoring them. A drone, uh, you can define the boundary and you can do regular periodical. If any change in the borders of the forest lands, you can e automatically digitize alerts you so that the data will support them in making the decision faster, rather is one aspect. Second is majority of the forest areas of poaching is happening because lands and a lot of uh, land has been by local or because of the uh, forces which are around, uh, people are doing it. So mapping and surveying of all the forest areas is a very important aspect which government of India is also trying to push. Uh, the, so that um, uh, they could able to identify the how much of land area is retained because which is in digital what says in thousands and lakhs of hectares on ground how it is. Second is on the doing a lot of uh, plant count, species count uh, or doing a lot of analytical ways or what they are doing it. Um, we have worked with few of the uh, IFS officers where they are saying identifying the strings because a lot of people are doing like uh, killing the uh, like going for hunting and everything so identifying the strings uh, or identifying some uh, the uh, they even they've had uh, animals with a uh, gps tags to identify where are they present in the forest areas by just doing the video uh, aerial imaging or aerial video and they could identify where are these plants uh, the animals are present in the forest areas so quickly so basically what you were taking few days few hours is in few minutes you could able to do with the technology like a drone walk. Wonderful. Sounds very effective. Uh, Rajiv ji, uh, I would like to ask you, I mean, uh, since, uh, you know, forest is so, such a vital uh, thing, uh, in agriculture, we put the soil for rest. I mean, we, 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 keep the, keep, we, we keep a season where we don't grow anything. 
can't we put the you know uh, forest uh, on rest for a on, in a in a periodic basis? So you agri in agriculture you put uh, your land uh, for for uh, for for rest for some time. So likewise in uh, forest also, you give some rest to forest. Don't disturb it. So if you don't disturb the forest areas, it will uh, rejuvenate. It will come up on its own with with little bit of interventions. So it's important to give rest to the forest as well. So I mean, uh, do we have any such policy? Are are we thinking? Would you guys recommend such policy where you know forests are put for rest? Depending on the depending on the circumstances, yes. Uh, I am from Jammu and Kashmir cadre, so we have a lot of pressure of grazing there. So uh, there is system of introducing the periodical grazing system. Mm -hmm. So you just put some part of the compartment to rest, and you don't don't allow grazing. We have lot 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 of population of uh, no, nomads, and lot of population of uh, uh, goats and sheep there. So put some part of the forest to rest for some time, periodical rest, and then let let it rejuvenate, let it uh, uh, regain its health. Then we open for for it after decade or so. We, then we open it for uh, for next uh, uh, cycle of grazing. Uh, Khadi sir, everything comes back to you know basic public awareness, and uh, you know there are, there are basically two stakeholders. One is the government and policymakers, and another is the people like us uh, and there's a lot of emphasis on you know pub public awareness we see this uh, we, we hear about it a lot uh, we see i mean whenever, whenever you go to any 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 national park we see those boards you know guides telling you basic uh, as a formality mo mostly uh, what to do what not to do but how do we make this interactive uh, where it becomes a, you know part of either a curriculum or our daily conversation within the house can we gamify the whole thing you know, uh, as while Uttar Pradesh, and especially hills, the hills which are in the part of uh, now Uttarakhand, uh, there was a Kumau Grievance Committee in 1930, which was uh, under the Govind Vallabh Pant, who was that time the uh, one of the uh, councillor from that area, and peop, uh, government re started reserving now the, in the nationalising the forest areas, and there was a big agitation against the uh, movement that we should not. Uh, uh, nationalized the forest area. 1861 forests were nationalized in India, and when it came to the hills, people burned that thing. Kum then the Kumau Grievance Committee was uh, formed for the, uh, uh, the to solve the problem with the interaction with the people. And that time, the concept of ban panchayats came in that area, where ban panchayats were declared as forest officers, and communities were given. There was a reserve forest area. Then there was a degraded forest area, means Soyam area, Abbal, Doyam and Soyam, these are three Urdu words. Abbal means class for one forest, which were with the forest department, which were reserve forest areas. Doyam means those forest areas, which are protected forest areas, and which was the, uh, the products were shared between the communities and then. And Soyam means those third class forest areas, which are very de de uh, de uh, deteriorated and, de and, and, and are in very bad shape. With the help of communities, those areas were uh, wanted to uh, be recovered. And there are many good panchayats. I don't know whether you went to Tungnath area uh, ever. The forest area is with the, uh, the uh, ban panchayats. Uh, uh, is, is with, with ban panchayats, probably one of the best ban panchayats. If you go to Kumau area and many parts of Gadwal areas, the British Gadwal, not the uh, Terry Maharaj as Gadwal like Terry and Uttarkashi, but old Gadwal and Kumau areas, we have one of the best uh, the community forest areas, which are uh, the ban panchayats. And that's the first joint forest ma management in India started in 1930 uh, by the Kumau Girbyans Committee and with the help of Britishers. So definitely, if communities want, uh, they can uh, protect the forest areas. And what happened that when we provided the liquid petroleum gas in cylinders in the hills of uh, Uttarakhand, Uttar Pradesh at that time, it was in 70s, early 70s or mid 70s, a lot of forests were protected from that area. So you have to give an alternative to these people. Uh, that's why you can save it. Otherwise, um, even communities will not listen it. You have to provide alternative to them for the resources they are using for the forest areas. Rajivji, those are the, I mean, uh, uh, those people who are in the, that community, they are the real stakeholders. And uh, 
but people like us who are who are not living in that vicinity we are not living in jungle or near the jungle and we occasionally go to the jungle i mean or jungle or any other you know national park uh, how do you educate us i mean you know printing material and having such conversation once in a while is one thing but how to engage the communities who are part of the urban culture i mean mumbai maharashtra or you know delhi ncr people who often uh, very often go to the jungle or forest how do you engage them i mean do you have any insight See, it's important to engage them in the local in uh, urban forest areas first like in delhi you have a lot of biodiversity parks uh, as i understand uh, lot many people visit biodiversity parks lot many students university students college students they visit biodiversity parks so it's very important to make them understand the importance of forest right at the very beginning of their uh, college life let's say school life so it's part of the basic curriculum at the at the primary and primary primary education level itself only then i and you will be educated ek bar hum graduation pe pahunch jate hain we understand we know too many things and Uh, we become very less flexible to grasp new things so it starts it should start from the childhood stage only then that habit will be inculcated okay that's that sounds good uh, prem ji uh, again coming back to the, base, the same conversation i asked you uh, same question i mean uh, your drone does what it does but then you must have been interacting with other people there is a lot of you know uh, innovation happening in technology ai and uh, an entrepreneur always look for uh, a solution uh, you know the need gap you know uh, what are the other solutions which can help conservation sustainability and also tourism i mean do you do you have any any solution have you interacted with uh, any other entrepreneur uh, definitely uh, when we are doing this uh, reforestation activities also seed ball making is a very fascinating for a lot of people so they come to the forest like what we did was in few of the forest areas we work with the, all the uh, companies right they bring their employees in the forest area to make the seed balls so that becomes a community engaging kind of activities what do we see because rather than taking them to any of the restaurant and everything they want to make them experience forest and also do certain activity in the forest areas is what what we've seen first and a um, lot of people are doing the carbon sequencing carbon credit as a two things which globally we're doing it in india also a lot of people are working towards the carbon sequencing and carbon credit market what we have seen uh, uh, as a uh, the technology wise what we have seen and um, the engaging the community uh, at a forest level uh, there are a lot of challenges is because Uh, what we have seen is uh, in any of the uh, interventions what we do in the forest there's a limitation because of a, a certain uh, because they cannot allow people uh, because there lot of other um, the uh, activities are going to happen so what they're doing is very periodically they do activities it can be more of a awareness point of view or telling the new technology how it works in more of a managing the uh, the um, uh, nearest all the community elements and everything but what we have seen is uh, the adoption is little slow at present in the forestry space but now uh, the uh, what we were depending on people uh, is now going to uh, we're going to depend on the technology having thousand people monitoring that forest having couple of drones or couple of technology like we have adopted cctvs right then we are adopting now the technology like a drone and a softwares kind of a stuff because we want to sit in the office and want to monitor enter what is happening in the forest areas is that where ex- the experience what we been requested from the lot of officers so let's enter to the final round of uh, this conversation kathi sir uh, i mean in tourism and especially in uh, pahad mein सबसे पहला जो डेस्टिनेशन होता है आदमी का वो रिसॉर्ट होता है होटल होता है सबसे पहले लोग वहीं जाते हैं कान फी एंगेज देम एंड मेक देम रिस्पॉन्सिबल एज वेल एंड क्रिएट सम काइंड ऑफ पॉलिसी और कैंपेन वेयर दे बिकम पार्ट ऑफ द 
awareness campaign and take care of the ecological ecosystem? Definitely, yes. Uh, the resorts owners, associations, and uh, the other hoteliers, they can take part in conservation of that areas. And uh, uh, the uh, awareness they can create. But uh, sometime they also become, uh, you know, uh, against the policies of the department where uh, the conflict start between the, the government and the, and the and the uh, uh, resort years that especially I see in COVID areas, uh, they have encroached the best corridor between Ramnagar division and COVID, where the elephants, tiger, everybody was moving. Now, uh, the sometime the, uh, the tiger moves or elephant moves in the area, then conflict started. And they have created their non-governmental non uh, these social uh, organizations, which receive fund from abroad in the name of uh, uh, protecting the wildlife and this thing. And they are doing their work, but uh, uh, the especially in the hilly area, not in, uh, confined to this area, they can generate employment, they can generate uh, awareness uh, if they are following the government policies. So in, uh, finally, I would ask you uh, to you know, end this session on a very positive note. Uh, Tell us one success story of yours as a forest officer, uh, which helped, uh, uh, which helped you know uh, both educating people and also uh, promote sustainable tourism. I always give example of Corbett. Corbett, uh, you know, there is a uh, dam called Kalagal Dam in Corbett, which created an 80 square kilometer big lake in the park area, and this lake was created in early 1970s and its lifetime was expected 25 years. That by, seven, by two, before the 2000, the uh, siltation will take place and the lake will die and the project will also die. This was the, yes. that's why the all buildings are made for 25 years only in the, uh, in the Kalagad area. But the Corbett uh, Lake and the hydroelectric project is much after 50, it is 50 years it is working. And another, at least I can say 30 or 40 years, it is not going to anywhere. Its best example is the two forest divisions are created to plant the catchment area of uh, the Ramganga River in the Garhwal area and Kumau area. And the excellent work done by the, these two divisions. Still, the sil no siltation is in the lake in, in Corbett area. This is one of the best examples. Where... Second is the Bhagla Nagal Dam. If you start from Anandpur Saab, you climb that, you see the massive plantation done in the catchment area of Bias, uh, that uh, uh, river, Bhakala River, which uh, up to uh, Bilaspur, and which stopped siltation in the, uh, and that's why the Bhakala Nagal Dam is surviving till today. These are the two best examples I always quote. There will be many, because I have worked in Uttarakhand, and, 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 and I know about Corbett, and uh, they are, we are three or four people who have worked in the Corbett areas here, sitting here. I can give that, still, I don't think it is another 20 or 30 years um, the, the lake is going to die in the Corbett area. It means that this is the best example how the uh, good work in the catchment areas can stop uh, the siltation, floods, and anything. Nothing happened in, in, in Kalagar Dam for the last 50 years. Rajiv Ji. Uh, in my last question, I was uh, with uh, Delhi Development Authority as the principal commissioner. We worked in the Amna floodplains and eco-restoration of Yamna floodplains. Of course, uh, uh, help from the locals were very important. Whole of the areas was encroached. And the role of encroachment, again, and restoration of sites, uh, and the identifying uses of the locals are paramount to the success of the project. And now you go to the sites, sites which were totally encroached three, four years back, totally degraded. Now they are sites where hundreds of uh, migratory birds are coming. Beautiful uh, um, um, floodplain forests have been created. And uh, when, we, uh, um, when we say the floodplain forest, it is not the trees. It is basically the grasslands. Uh, Khati sir very rightly pointed out that uh, grasslands are very important ecosystem that we have that is often ignored. Uh, whether it is alpine forest or nilgiris, nilgiris uh, grasslands were converted into the uh, again uh, plantations, or the floodplains like Chambal and the Yamna floodplain, where rainfall is very low and it cannot sustain very very high forest. Their grasslands are very important. So those grasslands have helped in the restoration of floodplain, and now 
those sites which which used to be encroached you see hundreds of people coming in the for morning walk hundred thousands of people uh, coming uh, for the evening walk and during the winters and ho uh, holidays you see people sitting uh, sitting out there college students uh, are uh, reaching out that area sitting beside the water body lakes a lot of birds are there migratory birds are there so it's a success story for us thank you thank you sirs for sharing such insights and enlightening us thank you audience for listening and uh, i hope next time jab aap kahin ghumne jayenge to selfie se zyada focus environment pe aur uh, usko protect karne pe hoga thank you very much thank you thank you for an engaging conversation thank you so much everybody it's now time to witness the incredible journey of india's environmental stewardship from expanding our forests to revitalizing wildlife the ministry of environment forest and climate change has made significant progress let's take a look at their remarkable achievements over the past year in this special video The Ministry of Environment, Forest and Climate Change has responsibility of ensuring well-being of country's biodiversity, forest and wildlife and takes steps to prevent and contain various types of pollution. The ministry has taken strong strides towards realizing its mission during past couple of years. Here is a glimpse of its key achievements. As per India State of Forest Report 2021, The total forest and tree cover in India is 80.9 million hectares which is 24.62% of the total geographical area of the country. Forest cover has increased by 1540 square kilometer and tree cover has increased 721 square kilometer compared to 2019. The number of protected areas in the country have risen from 7 45 in 2014 to 998 last year this accounts for 5.28% of the country's total geographic area bringing prime minister narendra modi's vision to action indian forest officials ensured return of the cheetah during past two years wild cheetah were translocated from namibia and 12 cheetah from south africa to kuno national park in madhya pradesh The tribe now grown to 24, half of which are cubs. Four tiger reserves, that is Pesh Tiger Reserve, jointly located in Madhya Pradesh and Maharashtra, Satpura Tiger Reserve in Madhya Pradesh, and Manas Tiger Reserve in Assam, have been conferred with Conservation Excellence Award in recent years. Marking 50 years of Project Tiger, the latest Tiger Census report released in August 2023. During the Global Tiger Day celebrations highlights India's leading role in tiger conservation. The 2022 tiger estimation shows a substantial increase in country's tiger population growing from 2226 in 2014 to 3682 in 2023 with over 75% of world's tigers now residing in India. The International Big Cat Alliance was launched by the Honorable Prime Minister of India on 9th April 2024 for conserving global big cats including tiger. The Botanical Survey of India and Zoological Survey of India has carried out the digitization of 16500 specimens with 45000 images of type and non-type of Indian faunal specimens. There were no blue flag certified beaches in India in 2014. Government of India initiated the beach development work and eight beaches were conferred blue flag certification in 2020. In 2022, number of beaches with blue flag certification had grown to 12. Mangrove initiative for shoreline habitats and tangible incomes project was launched on World Environment Day on 5th June. restoration of mangrove forests rupees 100 crores were allocated as project outlay for the financial year 2023 2024 
India has increased its tally for Ramsar sites to 80 by designating five more wetlands as Ramsar sites. The number of Ramsar sites in the country has increased from 26 to 80 in the last 10 years. Amrit Dharohar Yojana has been launched for conservation of Ramsar sites through community participation on the Environment Day 2023. These are considerable achievements as ministry has increased forest cover and wildlife despite rapid urbanization and fast-based development which has been taking its toll on country's flora and fauna. Let's hope the green warriors win this battle sooner than later. Moving on to our next session of the day, we will now discuss a very interesting topic, the coexistence of humans and wildlife. Our eco-warriors are like environmental superheroes, armed with GIS tools and a deep love for nature, orchestrating a delicate dance where both people and wildlife can thrive. Their efforts transform potential conflicts into collaborations, proving that with a bit of ingenuity and a lot of heart, Harmony between humans and animals isn't just a dream, it's a reality in the making. We are honored to invite Mr. Sanjay Shukla, Member Secretary, Central Zoo Authority, New Delhi, Mr. G. Malikarjun, Director of Sanjay Gandhi National Park, and Mr. Naveen Khandelwal, Deputy Conservator of Forest Sitapur, to join us on the stage for a panel session. This session will focus on the crucial topic of coexistence of humans and animals, where your insights and expertise will contribute significantly to the discussion. Eminent wildlife filmmaker Mr. Ajay Suri will be moderating this session. And before we begin with the panel discussion, I would like to invite Mr. Malika Arjun and his team forward for an interesting presentation showing how humans are living peacefully in coexistence with wildlife in Sanjay Gandhi National Park. The stage is yours, sir. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, it's my privilege to be part of this uh, gathering. I, along with my friend, Mr. Sunetra, we are discussing, just I will not take much time, we'll, uh, within a period of 10 minutes, we'll complete how we have migrated from a situation of more conflict in uh, Mumbai, especially most of the people, if you talk about Sanjay Gandhi National Park, you tell that always people will remember the leopard conflict. So just we give a very important journey that has started in uh, 2011. Next. In the picture, you see that it is a green oasis in an urban jungle. So this city is known for very high density human population. At the same time, this national park supports very high density leopard population. Next. Next. As I told, this Mumbai city, it actually supports more than 21,000 people per square kilometer. In, in spite of this much of very high dense population, we have 40 to 45 leopards in the Sanjay Gandhi National Park landscape. Next. Next. So we have th two protected areas in the Mumbai metropolitan region. So they provide the much needed ecosystem services for this, the, the urban development in this particular area. Next. See, as I told that, this was the period of conflict. If you see from 1990s till 2013, we had a very big conflict. So the peak was in the year 2003 somewhere. Then after that, again peak started in 2011. Then the department took a conscious decision to, to analyze why it's happening. So because you all appreciate that being in Mumbai, and if something happens, then always there is, it is a very sensitive issue. So we traveled a long way from this particular point till today. As on, as on date, we have a very peaceful coexistence. 
And I'm very proud to say that the last human death happened in Sanjay Gandhi National Park was in 2012-13. After that, no single human death has happened in this national park. We do got, we do recorded two human deaths, one in Film City in 2017 and in RA Colony in 2022. So both these, we can say it is not the, because we, in, in 2022 I'm very much in the park when this incident happened in the RA Colony. This has happened because of the human error, not because of our leopards. Next. These are all some of the images which you can you very well see that how happily our leopards coexisted with the human beings. So these are all the uh, camera trap images taken near the human habitations. Next. This is one example how the space has been shared between leopards and human beings. You just see the timings on the photograph. It is in the early morning, just it is a fraction of a second. There is a movement of leopards and human beings on the same track. Next. This is another example of sharing of space between human beings and the leopards. Next. Aao, chita di khate hai, aao. चाचा और चीता दिखाते हैं। चाचा और चीता दिखाते हैं। Next one. You can see the kind of, uh, the change in attitude or change in behavior in this leopard. In the leopard. This is a radio colored leopard, which we have studied for more than two months. You have seen that, na, the, how it has, the behavior has changed by looking at the, or by hearing the sound of that particular auto. Next. Next. So, as in the park, we have many challenges, which are very unique to Mumbai. So, we see the kind of housing societies, they are rising just, um, along the boundary of our national park. Next. We have a film city on the western boundary of the national park. This leopard has been the photographed inside a film city. This was a set. Actually, it's for running by, run by the Mahesh Kotari, a famous uh, film producer in Marathi. Next. Next. So this is the RA colony. It is on the, again, on the western boundary of, uh, our southern boundary of our uh, national park which you have seen that our leopards are coexisting with this, the livestock. Next. We have 43 tribal hamlets inside the national park. So still, our, all the Adivasis, they also happily, they coexist with our leopards. Next. There are a lot of encroachments on the periphery. Next. Because of human habitations and encroachments, we have a garbage issues. Next. So as a basic requirement for handling of these kind of rescues, we have a very good rescue team, we have a wildlife hospital, and also we have a leopard rescue center. Next. Just to see another, uh, the sharing of space between the humans and the leopards, just we can go through this one.
So this is what the present status of our uh, leopard and human coexistence in our Sanjay Gandhi National Park. So now I will request the moderator to take the conversation forward. Thank you, sir. It was really interesting to witness this human wildlife coexistence. I would now like to invite Mr. Amit Varma, Director Niti Ayog, to join us for the panel. Can we please get a chair on stage? Thank you so much, Mr. Varma, for joining us. And we may now begin with the panel discussion. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. This is a very interesting topic today. You know, the best practices to promote coexistence <coughs> between humans and wildlife. Now, this may, you know, the title may seem very academic, but actually it's not. It has got different layers, and we'll try to, you know, uh, figure out what these are. Uh, when we say best practices, you know, they may mean different things to different st stakeholders. Best practices for wildlife uh, management, wildlife officers may not be the best practices for wildlife or even for the people who are staying inside the sanctuaries, you know. And uh, as far as coexistence goes, you know, I'm reminding, I'm reminded of the fact that, you know, reminded of a phrase which is in vogue nowadays, which is synchronicity which says how in this universe everything is interconnected. And uh, it goes something like, uh, you know, there's an old adage which says that a butterfly fluttering its wings in Brazil can cause an earthquake in China. You know, this, we are talking about the interconnectedness of everything. And I think that this topic also is somehow reflected in this thing. And, you know, I'll, I'll start with uh, Mr. Malika Arjun because the film that you showed, it's really an eye-opener. You know, my team, a few years ago, we had made a film there on um, uh, Sanjay Gandhi National Park. But there are two sides of the coin. This is very good. This is something which, you know, everybody in India is appreciative about. But please do not forget the other side of the coin. You have District Chandrapur in Maharashtra, where uh, the highest number of you know, people are getting killed by tigers. 52 fatalities in one year. So how do you reconcile that? I'm asking you this question because you come from, from the same state. So whatever you are telling is true also, sir. But we have to see this in in two ways. What you are told in one way, that you are concentrating, you are explaining about the conflicts. Yeah. But at the same time, why conflict is happening? You see the, the kind of conservation efforts which has been put by the Maharashtra Forest Department that has resulted in manifold increase in tiger number in that particular state, by particular especially landscape. Mm -hmm. In Chandrapur district itself, we have more than 200 tigers. Just imagine in a single district you have more than 200 tigers, not, there are equally higher number of tigers are there staying outside the protected area, just like in Brahmapuri. Mm -hmm. So obviously the conflict is going to happen. But in order to manage 
and to mitigate our state has taken a lot of uh, this uh, innovative initiations so one is the uh, atal bihari janwar yojana we have started with it there so that has given a lot of uh, results at the same time you are telling that there is 50 time the human deaths happening in our you know in our state but still there is no human cry people have accepted that mm-hmm. people have accepted that we have to coexist with the the tigers there because tiger they are giving much more to that particular community in in chandrapur and in nagpur so when the people see the both whatever the gains they will get because of the conservation mm-hmm. and they also compare that with the losses then they take the conscious decision okay. to coexist with that one okay uh, i would also like to draw mr amit verma into uh, this conversation uh, uh, by the way i i met amit verma a few few years ago when he was the deputy director of corbett park and mr khati had uh, introduced me to him that was a few years ago and verma sir now you are in niti niti ayog uh, <laughs> Uh, and like Mr. Khati and Mr. Dheeraj who are sitting here, you have been associated with Corbett. You know, when it comes to the issue of coexistence, Corbett is always in the limelight and often for wrong reasons. You know, Mr. Khati just uh, said that how these corridors are being disturbed. I know for a fact that, you know, at one time, say 15 years ago, elephants from Corbett Park would regularly migrate to Radhadi Park and vice versa. There was this corridor just ahead of Kordwa. It used to be two to three kilometer wide corridor, which is now shrunk to just 200 feet or 200 yards. And secondly, of course, one of the biggest eyesores in the Corbett Tiger Reserve is Sundar Khal village. So with all these factors, do you think a peaceful coexistence between people and uh, animals will be possible in in Kobe, Uttarakhand. What's your take? Yeah, thank you so much. And uh, I would add to your list, Mehra sir is also here, who had been the director while I was the deputy director. So, uh, see, coexistence is uh, is a cultural term, and uh, a coexistence for a person in Africa would be different than what we have in Uttarakhand True. versus what we have in US. In US, human wildlife conflict is just, uh, you know, if you have a look at the tiger or, or any animal which is, has a potential to cause harm to you, that is sufficient cause to uh, shoot an animal. Whereas in India, our tolerance levels are very high. So a coexistence uh, would mean different things uh, at different places. And also the, uh, the kind of education and the exposure which people have now through uh, the excess of internet and YouTube and other social media channels. That has also changed the perception of how people uh, perceive this uh, coexistence. So having said that, I would say that uh, when we talk about human wildlife conflict and coexistence, uh, <clears throat> there are certain, uh, certain things which evoke more evo- emotions into us than anything else. So for example, a city may, may be losing two or three persons every day uh, through road accidents but that would not cause that hue and cry as, as a single leopard kill in, in the whole year would. So again, I mean, our acceptance of uh, belief that uh, an animal, which is probably what people think in their subconscious is an inferior being than human beings, is causing harm to them, becomes more inacceptable to them as compared to anything which is human induced. So those, uh, those are certain issues we have to deal with the psyche of the people and uh, uh, what I think is uh, uh, considering the population we have in tiger, uh, of tigers in Corbett Tiger Reserve, which is the highest tiger density in the world and also uh, in terms of uh, uh, the human density which is just outside the park. I think the number of conflicts is extremely minimal. I mean, we can't really imagine that uh, a, tiger, a tiger density of uh, more than 20 uh, uh, per 100 square kilometer would only lead to very few fatalities and that too, most of the time it is the forest staff who is patrolling the area rather than uh, the villages themselves. Uh, so, a lot of conflict is also dependent on the kind of habitat and what is the habit of the local people there. So, Sanjay Gandhi uh, National Park is a case in point. I, my whole wildlife journey started from that point. I am an alumni of IIT Bombay and Sanjay Gandhi National Park was an area which we used to frequently visit and um, also many of the wildlife areas as wildlife club uh, member I, I went to. Uh, 
there was huge amount of conflict there, but uh, there have been studies in terms of behavior of what forest department itself was doing in terms of catch and release of animals and, and the intensity of people going inside the park and certain behavioral changes actually reduce the conflict quite a bit. Uh, so, in terms of existence, I think that in Uttarakhand also, uh, we have forests like, uh, you can take example of Lensdown, which is not a park, in, or Ramnagar, which is frequently visited by uh, wild animals, but the conflict levels are low. But if you move up to Gadwal, uh, probably there is hunting uh, going on there, uh, the density of uh, wild prey is much less. Much less density of leopards cause a much greater conflict in those areas. So it's a function of uh, people's attitude towards uh, wildlife, uh, towards the prey base, uh, how, if they have uh, habits of hunting, and their own acceptance of if anything goes, uh, or how do they react to that kind of uh, situation. So, so it's a complex um, uh, coining of the term coexistence, but as far as, uh, as, far as uh, you know, numerically we have to, uh, if you have to see that whether uh, 10, 15, 20, 30 years down the line, if both of them would exist in these densities, that I would say yes. I mean, they'll very happily exist. Yeah. Let's have a national perspective on it uh, from Mr. Sanjay Shukla, who yes. is a member secretary, Central Zoo Authority. So you have heard uh, two of our eminent, eminent panelists speak about this issue. Where do you think the shortfall lies? What are the fault lines? And what all can be done to strengthen this coexistence? Uh, so before I take your questions, uh, I, I would like to pay my tribute because today is the Forest Martyrs Day. So I pay my heartfelt tribute to all those uh, forest soldiers who sacrificed their life in protecting the forest, the natural resources and the wildlife. So I pay my tribute to all those who ko. Now coming to uh, uh, your question and I'll take from where uh, Amit uh, said about the corbett. So coming to the national perspective, like if we take the example, uh, those animals which cause the ma maximum number of uh, conflict, or you can say the death. So if you take the figures of last five years, so the elephant is one species which causes maximum number of human deaths and injuries. Now again, if you just take the figure, the average annual uh, figure is close to 500 deaths because of elephants, and tiger uh, just 100. And half of that uh, uh, mostly happens in the state of Maharashtra. Similarly, for elephants also, if you take the figure, the total uh, uh, estimated population of uh, uh, elephants in our country is 30,000. And half of these population are in uh, the five southern states. Close to 16,000 are in the five southern states. And the state having the maximum number of elephant population, that is uh, Karnataka, the number of human deaths is very, very less in Karnataka, despite having a very large number of elephant population. The maximum number of human deaths occur in the state of West Bengal, Odisha, and Jharkhand. Now, again comes the question of, I mean, when we talk of coexistence, there are, you can define it in different ways, whether it is a tolerance or acceptance, because coexistence is a sort of utopian dream to have coexistence with these animals. So coexistence can only happen if the conflict is absent, if you remove the conflict, then only the coexistence can happen. We can just all put our efforts towards coexistence. So, now again, uh, making a comparison of our country, like we river gods, uh, we are celebrating the recently we celebrated Ganesh Chaturthi, or abhi bahut sare hamlo ke ghar mein abhi Ganpati ji virajman hai. And this uh, is in our culture, in our mythology, by, like we river animals, like elephant and tiger and many other animals. Sri Lanka, se agar hum compare karte hain, the total elephant population in our country is 30,000. Sri Lanka is just one fourth, 7,500. If you take the number of human deaths in Sri Lanka, it is 500. Uh, sorry, just 100. And number of elephant deaths is 500. In our country, Despite having this much of huge human population, 1.45 billion, Sri Lanka just had 23 million human population. The number of human deaths is just 100, elephant death is 500. In India, human death is 500, elephant death is just 100. So here we, toler we have a very high tolerance level and we have acceptability. Our data uh, uh, was analyzed for three states related to the deaths, human deaths because of elephants in the state of Chhattisgarh, Jharkhand, and Assam. 
and we came to a conclusion that even in death, if you just analyze the deaths also, there are certain villages or certain hot spots where such happen. So now again comes like what are the major issues which cause this conflict and what can be done to remove these issues and yes. that can be addressed that will help in the coexistence as such in a larger way. So this is the thing. Okay. That's good. Uh, Uttar Pradesh ka zikr, or, and we are fortunate to have Mr. Naveen Khandelwal with us. Uh, like he just told me that he was, uh, he was associated with Pili Bhita at one time. Or Uttar, Khade, Uttar Pradesh aajkal dobara se media mein surkiyon mein hai, lekin uh, galat pajaon se. Bhediya. Bhediyon ka jo ek aatank hai, wo, wo aaj koi bhi TV channel aap khol ke dekh lije, aapko milega. Pilibhit ke andar bhi mein samajhta hoon ki Khandelwal sahab, there has been <coughs> so much of human death, deaths which have taken place in Pilibhit. Apparently because Pilibhit, unlike Kobet, it does not have a proper buffer zone. How would you, how do you see the, the picture in Uttar Pradesh as to, as to, you know, the co coexistence between humans and uh, wildlife? Has it taken a hit or is something mean uh, something meaningful be, uh, being done by by the administration forest department i mean again uttar pradesh mein jo i will say ki uttar pradesh mein you we are talking about wildlife we majorly focus on tri area because that is the mainly area where wildlife is existing and pilibhit dudwa and you are talking barhais uh, we have good number of population and recent efforts had in resulted in increased density of wildlife and uh, same with the human population. Human population also increasing. So density increase hone ki karan, dono, uh, wildlife ki and humans ki, the interaction jo earlier utna nahi tha, the interaction between human and wildlife is more. Oh. And I'm not saying ki interaction evolved just like today. Interaction happening from last 50 or more than that. But the negative interaction is happening or it is getting more noticed more. I'm talking about Pilibhit. Pilibhit, uh, the community living there, as uh, pointed out by earlier speakers, the tolerance limit of the people, the community, is much higher there. Unless they are directly involved, the fatality is in their family, then they are organized. Otherwise, if they see tiger in their village, they are not that hostile to the animal. And this is because the effort of the forest department. If we are able to communicate, just seeing a tiger in your area, it's not a conflict. Then you can manage that conflict. Again, forest department is doing a lot of effort. Uh, because uh, uh, strictly we speak, coexistence of human and wildlife. At a single point of time, if, if we take spatial and temporal component, Human and wildlife cannot coexist at the same place at the same time. So we have to manage that. Co-occurrence at the same time, it is really difficult. We can manage the interaction, but if they are existing at the same time, definitely sooner or later negative interaction will come. So we have to create a buffer. Luckily, in Tarai area, we have sugarcane population, as you uh, mentioned earlier. Believe we don't have buffer area, but we have sugarcane crop. And sugarcane crop is the main buffer area which is acting between the wildlife area and the main population area. So sugarcane is helping forest department in managing the interaction. Again, because sugarcane crop does not need so much intervention during the time of, uh, as the crop ripens, you don't need much in intervention by the farmers in the crop. So most of the time the field is empty. Uh, once maximum you will need two, three times uh, weeding or something like that, but you don't need much intervention and the, most of the time the field is empty. If you can manage the harvest season, when th there is a harvesting of sugarcane, if you manage that, the whole, uh, the interaction will be minimal. Again, uh, now the, because the density has increased, the tiger is going southwards because the, from Tarai area, it is moving towards South District. Like I, uh, right now, I'm posted in Sitapur, and Sitapur have reserve forest area at least 100 kilometers from there. Right now, there are at least three to four tigers in Sitapur area, which have no forest area at all, no reserve forest area at all. Why? 
because we have river, rivers there and riverine ecosystem there. And because of sugarcane field, we are managing a tiger without not a single negative interaction since last three or four years. So it is possible we have to manage the interaction and department is doing a lot of efforts. Uh, because uh, in core area, we are fencing that area, uh, except the corridor area. Because if we fence the corridor area, the interaction of the wildlife will limit. Except the corridor area, we are fencing by chain link fencing and the movement of uh, animals restricted from entering into the community area. Again, we have initiated a good program like called Bag Mitra. Bag Mitra was initiated in Pilibhit only and it is a community steward program in which we uh, handpick volunteers from the village where the sensitivity is higher and we train them. We train them to identify the signs, we train them to identify the animals and we train them to communi communicate our message to the local community. If forest department communicate to the community, it, the message uh, reaches to the community, but it is not that effective. If the community member speaks for our, us, it is highly effective. And through that program, we have managed the, the interaction. Again, I'm saying the interaction with tiger and, uh, tiger and human, we have managed it quite well. And the uh, number of negative in incidences, the, as we speak, the injuries or cattle depredation or uh, human death, has brought, we brought down it to very minimal. And it act, acts as a uh, question for us. Uh, if there's a conflict incidences, the Bagmitra helps us to question, to communicate our uh, masses and to help us in the rescue operation also. Right. Thank you. Uh, Amit Varmaji, I would like to come back to you again. You know, uh, Abhijo is a panel discussion over the panel. Maybe we spoke about uh, the role being played by <coughs> resorts. I think Mr. Khati said something about it. I believe resorts uh, serves two kind of purpose. At one, they help, you know, at one level they help uh, <coughs> propagating the cause of wildlife by bringing in more tourists, you know, who can spread the good, good word. But at the same time, you know, resort owners have their own compulsions, you know, like they always want repeat customers. And uh, so a lot of unethical things might be going, you know, going along. When you were in uh, Corbett Park and now you are in Niti Ayog, so have you come across, uh, you know, these instances and, uh, you know, what all can be done to curb them if these things are happening, you know? So, uh, so wherever there are uh, businesses involved, uh, it has to be profitable. So it, a business cannot run without profit. And results are no different. Uh, they have to be profitable and for that they need customers. So, uh, to believe that a resort owner would, uh, I mean, they'll have some standards in terms of uh, conservation standards which they'll follow, but to believe that they are going to uh, jeopardize their uh, profitability is, I think, uh, being unfair to them as well. Having said that, uh, we have to really create a framework where uh, we can uh, manage the ill effects of uh, bringing in too much of tourism in the forest areas. So, for example, I remember uh, Khati sir himself was uh, uh, the first uh, chief wildlife warden to uh, issue very detailed guidelines on how tourism is going to be managed um, in uh, Corbett Tiger Reserve and that happens in most of the tiger uh, areas and other areas also. So, uh, so there are certain checks and balances, I think, uh, in, the, in the era which we live in now uh, with social media being so active and the technology and AI and other tools being available to us. So while we understand that there would always be a pressure uh, in terms of resorts to keep, uh, keep their business going throughout the year, I mean, we see in Corbett that uh, initially probably, uh, you know, in 80s is when the first uh, tiger uh, uh, tourism started and the first resort came in. Right now we have more than uh, 300 uh, resorts which have engulfed the whole tiger reserve in uh, all directions. Resorts creating, creating pressure on the wildlife. Yes, uh, the major corridors are definitely getting affected. Uh, many of the areas which are deep inside the forest, uh, the patches of land which we always, always thought was uh, a fallow land which would probably be used for grazing by villagers, you know, but it is privately owned. They have all, uh, you know, you, you, you can see them springing up with resorts all throughout. So there is a certain degree of disturbance there inside the forest. but. Uh, I think the tolerance of uh, wild animals to this kind of uh, disturbance which is not harmful to them is also uh, pretty high. 
I, I mean, if you see the, the safari, the way the safari is conducted in the tiger reserves, it is a miracle that nobody gets hurt, right? I mean, the tiger is there, there are 20 jeeps which are just jumping over the tiger, but the tiger still tolerates them, probably believing that they are not there to harm the tiger as such. So, while I'm not justifying that kind of behavior, but uh, what I'm trying to say is that uh, um, if, if the community is getting benefited in terms of the employment gains which are uh, coming in through the resort owners, uh, the acceptability of coexistence increases and I think uh, resorts also play an important role uh, in that sense for the coexistence, yeah. Uh, Shukla ji, you being a, you know, a senior forest officer and since you know, you can, you can take us to a, to a bird's eye perspective of, of the things, you know, what, what we've been talking about. Do you think that this increased human intervention in the matters of wildlife, say, by way of resorts, by way of uh, more tourists coming in, by way of more gypsies, do you think this coexistence will will you know will get affected in a negative way, or uh, or will it actually strengthen the wildlife in India? Because in Africa, I'm told you know, the entire Africa is more or less you know uh, depended on wildlife tourism. So there, it's an industry. Here, wildlife is not the main industry. So how do you look at these things? And, and I, I believe it's, it's going to be a tightrope walk. Right. Uh, you must be aware, like recently, a committee has been constituted by the Honorable Supreme Court to look into all these issues related to tourism, especially in the Tiger Reserves area. And one of the major concern is uh, uh, about the uh, resorts which are coming up in those areas and what should be the regulation, what should be the noise level, how to ro regulate this and other any sort of activities which is taking place uh, in the uh, uh, tiger reserve as well as the protected areas. Uh, so this is one thing. When we compare it with the other countries like in African countries or uh, uh, like mostly the, mostly the wildlife is... Uh, uh, the di more diversity and uh, it is in Africa only. But even in Africa also like the countries like in Kenya, the Masai Mara, that is also unregulated tourism. And this in many ways it is harming the wildlife and there is a large de de decline in the population of uh, many of the, uh, uh, the big five species as well as the antelopes which uh, like the wildebeest and zebra also. Some of the countries like uh, Botswana and Namibia, they are doing really good. And one very successful example comes from the Rwanda, like these uh, mountain gorillas are confined to only three countries like Rwanda, Uganda and the uh, Congo. So in the Virunga National Parks, that is, uh, uh, you can go and see the mountain gorillas, but the disciplined tourism, I'll just give you an example. Like when I visited there, uh, that is one of the costliest tourism just for uh, visiting the mountain gorillas in the wild for one hour, you have to pay $1,500 per person. So that is sort of one of the, and that is on the uh, on foot safari, that is a trekking safari. But the clock starts as soon as you see your first gorilla, and the time, uh, as soon as the clock kicks one hour, you have to just leave back that place. But here in India, I have seen that many of the tiger reserves and many of the protected areas, uh, the most of the, uh, the uh, I mean, violation of the tourism rules is done by the uh, so-called good photographers who try to do, uh, in, uh, 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 there is always a temptation to get as uh, good uh, an image as it is possible. So many times they try to break the rules to get a good image at the cost of, not only at the cost of disturbing the animal as well causing the trouble to the other tourists there. They'll try to break the row and will try to go always in the front. Many times, some, in some cases we have heard that they get, out, get down of the vehicle. Then again, unethical practice related to photography by the photographers, like uh, in some of the other protected areas, if you are going to click the image of a raptor, you may many times nail the, uh, some of the prey species, maybe reptiles or some uh, small rodents and other animals. So these are the practices which are unethical and should not be uh, encouraged. Now again, coming to the tiger reserves, again, the regulated tourism is very, very uh, necessary and the responsible tourism. Like one example uh, uh, Dheeraj uh, gave about Corbett also, and I was also field director in Kana Tiger Reserve. So that time I started uh, using the uh, mobile device in the uh, vehicles. So now that is being used in Kana, Pech as well as in Tadoba. 
So that regulates the tourism where you cannot go do over speeding, you cannot zone jump, you cannot go off-roading to non-tourism areas, and you cannot over stop at a place when a sighting is happening. So there are a, a lot many regulations to uh, bring in. Similarly, the, the committee which has been constituted, so one of the major issues is about the noise level. Because these, some of the uh, tiger reserves, the resort they have begun, the wedding destinations also. So we have also to look into and even the people who go there and they have to see that they don't create a lot of noise. Obviously the animals, they get used to it, but that is not a normal behavior. If you go to a non-tourism area, if you see a tiger, tiger is very shy. But if you go in the tourism area, we'll see that, uh, that uh, despite be being so many vehicles at that place, just because from the uh, very early stage being a cub, the tiger has seen that uh, presence of human and uh, uh, the vehicles. So they don't get disturbed, but that is not a normal behavior of an animal. So we have to give them more space. And the Supreme Court has also observed that it has to be eco-centric, not tiger-centric in the tourism in any of these areas. So we, uh, we need to appreciate and work for that. Mr. Malka Arjun, you have, you, know, you have achieved stupendous results in uh, Sanjay Gandhi Park. Everybody is talking about it. Films are being made. Articles are being written day in and day out. Do you have a golden formula where you know, this thing can be replicated in other places which is seeing a lot of unrest, a lot of strife between humans and wildlife? For instance, not only in Chandrapur, there are lots of other places you know, in which you know, innocent people are getting killed or even innocent wildlife is getting wiped out. As far as our uh, experience in Sanjay Gandhi National Park is concerned, Collaboration, collaboration with the stakeholder is more important. That is what the success story or this, this mantra of any uh, peaceful coexistence with the wildlife and human beings that will come with a active collaboration with the, all the stakeholders, mainly with the local communities. So that is what the policy began. You see in many of the states, they are doing, the degree may be varying. In some in places it may be small, it may be in in a bigger terms, we are engaging the communities. Wherever you are engaging communities in a bigger way, there the level of conflict is less because accept, level of acceptance is more. So that's what you can see in a busy city like Mumbai. Right. So people have accepted that. Everybody knows that. Every, every day our leopards will go out to the housing societies, they'll come back. True. But people have accepted that one. Right. So that is what I say that community engagement is more important. I think we are coming to an end now. My last question would be to Mr. Naveen Khandelwal. Khandelwal, Khandelwal sir, you know, uh, like you heard, people's <coughs> intervention, you know, people's help, people's involvement is uh, required. So, do you are you doing such things in Uttar Pradesh? You know, because I have I have this uh, this in mind that we actually made a film a few years ago. How? There's a place called Mangla Jodi in Odisha, where, where the entire village consisted of poachers at one time. And now everybody in that village has become a conservationist. They're saving wildlife. And Uttar Pradesh, why I'm asking is Uttar Pradesh is probably the most populous state in India. So, so you have like human beings outside the park, inside the park, all over. So what are they doing on this? Uh, your question is very right. Hai. Lab, uh, मैं अपने एक्सपीरियंस से बताऊंगा जब मैं इंटरेक्ट करता था कम्युनिटी से तो उनका एक बेसिक क्वेश्चन होता था कि सर आपने टाइगर रिजर्व यहां ला दिया हमें क्या दिया आपने हमें तो टाइगर मार रहा है हम क्या करें मतलब हमें क्या मिला तो दैट इज व्हाट वी नीड टू कन्वे कि टाइगर रिजर्व से आपको क्या मिल रहा है अगर वो फेस हम चेंज नहीं कर पाएंगे तो वी आर फेलिंग इन समहाउ कंजर्वेशन तो वी आर डूइंग अ लॉट ऑफ थिंग्स इन दैट डायरेक्शन अगेन इफ First is we are involving them in tourism. We have created lots of self-help groups, EDCs, around the Tiger Reserve area. Uh, in Dudwa, we, because we have travel community there, we are involving Tharus in lot of tourism activity. Otherwise, we are providing alternative livelihood, alternative livelihood like we are, product, we are producing honey, we are uh, giving them uh, some uh, works to the humans. And uh, when we engage them in other activities also. Uh, one thing we are doing is we are providing them the benefit of government schemes. In India, we have lots of schemes by state-run schemes and center schemes. 
if we are but that is not reaching to the people because they don't have knowledge if forest department is helping the, the community near the forest to achieve the, the benefit of those schemes it's a great thing they will appreciate the effort of department if we are just doing nothing just getting the scheme help to them from district administration or some that it is a great effort for, for them so we we change their and their attitude towards for department and if we change towards first department the attitude towards wildlife also gets changed so that is that are that are the efforts we are doing in wildlife okay so thank you very much sir all the participants it has been a wonderful session i wish we had more time and we could have gone on ahead and thank you to all the you know members of the audience also for being patient thank you thank you so much all the panelists thank, thank you so much ajay sir Today marks a very special occasion, the Forest Martyrs Day, just like Mr. Verma mentioned. Let's explore the significance of this day and why it holds such importance for foresters and wildlife conservationists through this beautiful AV. September 11th marks a day of extraordinary sacrifice a day when we remember the unsung heroes who gave their lives to defend india's forests these are not soldiers on a battlefield but forest rangers and protectors facing relentless threats from poachers smugglers and the wild itself national forest martyrs day is a tribute to their courage a reminder that the fight for our planet's future comes at a deadly price These brave souls did not fall in pursuit of fame or fortune but to shield the life of our planet its forests and wildlife. The origins of this day trace back to a pivotal moment in 1730 in the village of Khejadli in Rajasthan. The Bishnoi community, devoted protectors of nature, faced a grave threat when Maharaja Abhay Singh ordered the felling of sacred khejri trees. Amrita Devi Bishnoi along with her three daughters stood against this decree refusing to allow the destruction of these trees in an unforgettable act of defiance amrita devi declared my head is available for the taking but not the trees tragically her words became her fate as she and her daughters were brutally executed yet their sacrifice sparked a movement 363 bishnois laid down their lives that day protecting the trees they held sacred forcing the maharaja to retreat and to apologize centuries later the legacy lives on in 2013 the government officially declared september 11th as national forest martyrs day a day to honor all those who have perished while safeguarding india's natural heritage this day is not merely one of remembrance it's a call to recognize the immense courage and dedication of our forest rangers and guards who put their lives on the line practically on a daily basis in the face of poaching illegal logging and other threats these brave individuals protect our forests with limited resources and often at great personal risk the statistics are harrowing india records more ranger deaths than any other country with over 160 fatalities reported between 2012 and 2017 alone These deaths come at the hands of armed poachers, smugglers, or even wild animals. Yet, despite these dangers, our forest rangers stand resolute, driven by a mission to safeguard India's natural treasures. As we commemorate National Forest Martyrs Day, we honor not only the fallen, but the ongoing fight to protect our forests. Their sacrifices remind us of the price of conservation paid in blood. Let us ensure that their legacy endures by supporting those who continue this vital work preserving India's forests for generations to come. We will now move on to our next session which focuses on the reforms needed in forest laws. IFS officers are like the avengers of the forest world. Armed with boots on the ground experience, they swoop in to fix outdated forest laws and ensure they're as eco-friendly 
and community friendly as possible. They spotlight gaps and push for updates, ensuring regulations keep pace with the needs of both nature and local communities. With their knack for balancing ecological preservation and community interests, they are transforming forest management and conservation into a dynamic, forward-thinking mission. To talk about what kind of new reforms are required in forest laws, I would like to invite Mr. Alok Prem Nagar, Joint Secretary, Department of Panchayati Raj, GOI New Delhi, Mr. Surendra Mehra, Advisor Niti Ayog, on stage and to discuss the critical reforms needed to advance forest conservation and management. The editor of Indian Masterminds, Mr. Sharad Gupta, will be the moderator for this session. We look forward to a thought-provoking discussion on shaping the future of our forest laws. Hello, everybody. So, good evening, sir. So, there are issues facing the forest. Firstly, because mostly forest officials are, especially the rangers and, and forest guards, they are having only a uh, lati and, and they have to combat the poachers who are equipped with uh, modern weapons. So, how do you see this dichotomy? How can a lati combat? Uh, modern ammunition and arms, sir. Surin, sir. Yeah, thank you for asking this question. And uh, uh, definitely, the issue is there uh, that you cannot uh, protect the forest with the lati. Uh, if we go in the background and uh, and uh, as the as in one of the uh, session we were talking about how we uh, try to protect the forest so with the help of people. But now, uh, those are the days when we uh, have to see forest from two different point of view. One, forest which we can protect with the help of uh, local people. And there are certain type of uh, forest areas or uh, certain type of uh, resources which can be protected only with the, with the enforcement. So definitely there is a need of uh, uh, improving the enforcement system in, uh, in forest department. Sir, besides uh, poachers, there is a threat of uh, encroachers also. So, Naga sir, if you can dwell on, on, because in cases of encroachments also, the forest officials have to take help of the police. And there is always a law and order problem. Often, cases are registered against forest officials also. So, what uh, laws needed to be changed to, to, to combat this problem? Thank you for having me here. Actually, the people who are better suited to answer this question would again be Surendra. Uh, I think Mali has had a tough time uh, with this sometime in his career, and a whole lot of people out here uh, um, would agree with you and would have several ideas of their own. Um, I, my sense is uh, uh, that the the mechanisms that currently exist for the disposal of uh, these uh, encroachments and the means that are available to these people, it's all there. Uh, but lots of times, like Surain said, that there are uh, areas where you can make do with a little force. There are areas where uh, stepping up the gear is something that you cannot do without. Uh, forest offences have changed in nature from the time that Baden Powell and Brandis would have these arguments in uh, before 27 Act came. So from that time, we moved so much further ahead. Uh, now there are organized gangs uh, in Tarai area that Khandelwal was talking about. Uh, there were some videos being passed around a few days back when there were shootouts and people were shouting and yelling, and I believe a couple of them got injured or something like that. So things have changed. You've got power chainsaws, people come with those, and in a matter of minutes, they've completed their operation, they've loaded it into their vehicles, and they've driven away. And the traditional methods, 
पहली कुल्हाड़ी चली तो बंदे को पता चल गया वो घर से निकल पड़ा दूसरी तीसरी बार तक जब तक उसने वो तैयार करना है तब तक वो सारा वहाँ पे वो बुक कर लेता है जाके सो द चैलेंज नाउ हैव इंक्रीज मैनी फोल्ड देयर इंटेंसिटी इज समथिंग दैट आर एक्ट्स आर एब्सोल्यूटली नॉट प्रिपेयर फॉर विच इज़ बाय वी सीक द हेल्प ऑफ पुलिस एंड देर हैव बिन इन्यूमरेबल इंसिडेंट्स इन द रिसेंट पास्ट वेयर where these issues have come to the fore and i'm sure the the respective departments are looking into it kyunki hum log jo bhi apni forest ethos hoti hai we put the resource at the center working plan banni hai so there is a growing stock and there is an annual sustainable yield just as you have capital and interest uh, but democracy wants the human being at the center so this is a, a basic contradiction that we are constantly struggling with अभी जब हम बात कर रहे थे तो अधिकतर लाठी का मुकाबला राइफल से कैसे होगा बट देर आर स्टेट्स लाइक असम एंड सम अदर स्टेट्स विच हैव अलाउड यूज ऑफ आर्म्स बाई फॉरेस्ट ऑफिशर्स तो आपको क्या लगता है कि स्टेट वाइज करना चाहिए या क्या सेंटर भी कोई लॉ पास कर सकता है कि फॉरेस्ट ऑफिसर्स को ज़रूरत पड़ने पर आर्म्स यूज़ करने को मजिस्ट्रियल पावर्स भी मिल मिल सकती हैं क्या ऐसा कोई सेंट्रल लॉ पास हो सकता है या होना चाहिए अगर हम सेंट्रल लॉ और स्टेट लॉ की बात करें तो ये बात सही है कि जितने भी दिस पावर्स आर देयर दिस आर गिवन बाय द स्टेट गवर्नमेंट्स अंडर देयर रिस्पेक्टिव एक्ट्स थ्रू डिफरेंट नोटिफिकेशन अभी अगर आप देखें अभी जो रिसेंट तीन लॉज हैं उसमें एक बहुत महत्वपूर्ण चेंज हुआ है देर वॉज वन Uh, privilege i would not say exactly privilege but one uh, upper hand with the forest officers was with respect to indian evidence act where it was said that uh, the confession made in front of forest officer will be admissible in court of law okay. but in the recent amendment uh, the powers the some some more uh, uh, powers are given to the police officers also jo bhartiya saksh adhiniyam hai abhi 2023 24 23 ka jo ki 24 se lagu hua hai usme यदि पुलिस ऑफिसर ने कोई एविडेंस कलेक्ट किया है और उस एविडेंस के बेसिस पे कोई कन्फेशन है और वो पुलिस ऑफिसर के सामने दिया है तो वो भी कोर्ट में लागू होगा तो व्हाट आई वांट टू से इज दैट इफ यू कनेक्टेड विद द फॉरेस्ट सो जो जो फॉरेस्ट में जिस जिस टाइप के ऑफेंसेस हो रहे हैं मैं एक बहुत छोटी सी बात बताना चाहूँगा एक बहुत पुराना केस है मैं अपने जितने भी मेरे स्टूडेंट्स हैं पुराने वन ऑफ द स्टूडेंट्स इज सिटिंग देयर तो उनको सबको बताता हूँ एक बड़ा इम्पोर्टेंट केस है लॉ में अबू बाकर वर्सेस स्टेट ऑफ वर्सेस पीसीसीएस उसमें कहा गया है कि कि हमें स्पेशल लॉ की जरूरत क्यों है फॉरेस्ट वाइल्ड लाइफ और नेचुरल रिसोर्सेज को बचाने के लिए उसमें जो जस्टिस थे उन्होंने कहा है कि जो फॉरेस्ट में ऑफेंसेस होते हैं वो लोगों के नोटिस में नहीं आते हैं और वो ऐसे जीवों के नोटिस में भी नहीं आते हैं जिनके खिलाफ वो ऑफेंस हुआ है यदि कोई ऑफेंस किसी इंसान के खिलाफ होता है तो देर आर चांसेस दैट देर बी सम ह्यूमन बीइंग बट इफ देर इज सम ऑफेंस व्हिच इज अगेंस्ट द वाइल्ड एनिमल्स और अगेंस्ट द फॉरेस्ट सो नो बडी इवन 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 दोज ऑफेंसेस गो अननोटिस बाय बाय द वाइल्ड एनिमल्स आल्सो सो दैट्स व्हाई वी रिक्वायर स्पेशल लॉ एंड दैट्स व्हाई द फॉरेस्ट लॉज आर द स्पेशल लॉज but why i gave you example of this this recent amendment in the in the in the uh, in the general law so we need i think to uh, mainstream these provisions in our uh, our acts which are otherwise applicable only in forest area like agar aapko main bataunga indian forest act jo 1927 mein bana hai i don't see any amendment in that uh, that act after after 1927 except for uh, some amendment with regard to seizure and confiscation and uh, रिमूवल ऑफ एनक्रोचमेंट्स उसके अलावा उसमें कोई अमेंडमेंट नहीं हुआ बट ऑन द कॉन्ट्री इफ यू सी द वाइल्ड लाइफ एक्ट देर हैज बिन मैनी चेंजेस दो जो इनफैक्ट वाइल्ड लाइफ एक्ट में जो चेंजेस हुए हैं वी आर स्टिल नॉट एबल टू ब्रिंग अ ब्रिंग अ बैलेंस विज अ वी अदर 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 लॉज बट डेफिनेटली वी रिक्वायर सम चेंजेस इन इंडियन फॉरेस्ट एक्ट टू गिव मोर पावर्स टू द टू द फॉरेस्ट ऑफिसर टू डील विद to 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 deal with the new types of offenses sir jis tarah se hum dekhte hain nagar sahab ki 
बहुत ढेर सारे लॉ के बारे में यही कहा जाता है कि मोर देन द लॉ इट इज़ बेसिकली द विल ऑफ द ऑफिसर टू इम्प्लीमेंट द लॉ उसको कितना अच्छे तरीके से इम्प्लीमेंट करते हैं उससे ज़्यादा असर पड़ता है तो क्या एग्जिस्टिंग लॉज इनफ हैं या या चेंजेस चाहिए सो आई लाइक टू चेंज टैक लिटिल बिट एंड यू नो सॉर्ट ऑफ जूम आउट ऑफ द सिचुएशन कि फॉरेस्ट लॉज मैं पंचायत राज में हूँ आजकल और एक हमारा कॉन्स्टिट्यूशनल अमेंडमेंट हुआ सेवेंटी थर्ड टू फोर्टी थ्री जी में हुआ कि सभी पंचायतें अपने लिए इकोनॉमिक डेवलपमेंट सोशल जस्टिस के लिए प्लान्स बनाएंगी और दे वुड कैरी आउट सेवरल स्कीम्स दैट फ्लो फ्रॉम द ट्वेंटी नाइन फोकस एरियाज दैट आर मैंशनड इन दी इलेवेंथ शेड्यूल माइनर फॉरेस्ट प्रोड्यूस फॉरेस्ट्री उसका भाग होते हैं तो आ, हम लोगों की एक टेंडेंसी होती है फॉरेस्ट वालों की और बड़ी सारी हमारे तो एक मुख्यमंत्री होते थे जो हम लोगों को पैरल गवर्नमेंट ही बोलते थे तो आ, ये होता है कि ये मेरा है और दिस इज़ माय टर्फ सो समटाइम्स वी लूज पर्सपेक्टिव ना वी आर सर्विंग विद इन अ फ्रेमवर्क आई एम नॉट अ ग्रीन पीस वॉरियर आई हैव नॉट यू नो सिर पे वो बांध लिया है कि मैं वो फलाना कर जाऊंगा और मर जाऊंगा वी वर्क विद इन अ सिस्टम एंड सिंस दीज ग्राम पंचायत आर गोइंग टू बी मेकिंग ग्राम पंचायत डेवलपमेंट प्लान्स फॉर दम सेल्स दे नीड टू दे नीड टू बी अ पार्ट ऑफ द ओवरऑल मेट्रिक्स सो आई विल टेल यू देर इज समथिंग इन द कम्पलीशन ऑफ दीज प्लान्स वी ड्राइव अ कैंपेन वंस एवरी ईयर for a 3 4 month period in which we want departmental people to go to gram sabhas and inform about the things that they are doing even before panchayat raj when i was in himachal we used to make a point of sending my forest guards to the uh, gram sabha meetings that ki wo forest fire protection mein apni madad kare to se hum log alag nahi ho sakte chahe meri kitni prabal ichha kyon na ho कि मैं फॉरेस्ट टैग कितनी इंटेंसिटी से इम्प्लीमेंट करूं क्या करूं अगर आपके साथ जनता नहीं है तो आप कतई कुछ नहीं कर पाएंगे सो दिस जीपीडीपी थिंग आई फाइंड दैट इन ऑल द कैंपेन दैट वी हैड द लीस्ट पार्टिसिपेटिंग पीपल इन द ग्राम सभा मीटिंग्स वी मॉनिटर इट थ्रू फैसिलिटेटर्स रिपोर्ट फॉरेस्ट वाले विद द एक्सेप्शन ऑफ तमिलनाडु स्टेट जहाँ पे शायद किसी एक व्यक्ति की ड्यूटी लगती है कि अपनी सारी ग्राम सभा में तुम ही जाओगे कहीं कोई नहीं जाता है ना तब फिर हम अपेक्षा करें कि वो लोग को एग्जिस्ट भी करें आपको अभी खंडेलवाल जी बता कर गए और हम बड़े प्यार से मिलते रहें अभिज्ञान शाकुंतलम जैसे जानवर आपके इधर उधर लिपट रहे हैं वैसे करके चलते रहें तो भाई किस जमाने में रह रहे हैं हम लोग तो जब तक हम ऐसे वी आर नॉट touching these people we are not telling them aggressively about our agenda uh, because wo bhi hamare jaise hi log hain uh, so when they will understand it and they will see uh, that there is a man who is owning up to this agenda uh, then they would have more empathy and i would uh, imagine that uh, we'd have uh, greater capability in implementing our agendas ye baat hui gpdp ki ek paisa hota hai jo schedule five areas ke upar sirf lagu hota hai Uh, वहाँ पे भी इट इज़ अ मिस्ड अपॉर्चुनिटी यू नो सो लाइक आई सेट वी आर पार्ट ऑफ अ सिस्टम आई कॉन्ट बी सेल्फ राइटियस इन डिग्नेंट फॉरेस्ट राइट्स एक्ट आ गया तो मैं गुस्सा होकर थोड़ी बैठ जाऊंगा भाई कि मेरा वो हो गया uh, जो काम मैं करने निकला था उसे करने में लोगों ने रुकावट कर दी नहीं कानून है सरकारी मुलाजिम है आपको वो इम्प्लीमेंट करना है तो उसमें पढ़िए उस काम को अभी मैं देख रहा हूँ पैसा में तो लोग बोलेंगे हमारा टर्फ नहीं है हमारा मैंडेट नहीं है but then uh, forest rights act is here for everybody to implement i mean you can't shut yourselves out hamare ek wo the jab himachal mein humne ye shuru kiya sanand sahab hamare yahan meeting mein aaye unhone bola kya hai is act ka to log idhar dekh rahe hain udhar dekh rahe hain pairon ki taraf dekh rahe hain koi bata nahi raha to unhone pucha tum ho kya uh, i mean are you a god sent uh, angel on a mission who has to carry out this job or who are people who who have a job to carry out yeah so these are things one needs to understand and the more proactive we are in adopting these agendas and adapting ourselves to them i mean what stops us for from ki ab ye ho gaya so ho gaya ab agar aapko fra mein dene exemptions to aapko dene hain 
अगर आप उसके लिए तैयार हैं और आप उस प्रोसेस को स्ट्रीम कर लेते हैं तो यू वुड बी सर्विंग अ बेटर पर्पज अगर आप खफा होकर दूसरी तरफ मुँह करके देखने लगें लोग ख़त्म करके चले जाएंगे तो ये चीज़ें अंडरस्टैंड करनी जरूरी हैं अंडरस्टैंड ऑल दीज पीपल हु सेट यर हु गॉट टू कैरी आउट दी ऑर्डर्स दैट आर गिवन बाय आई एफ एस ऑफिसर्स दे रियली फेस द ब्रांट ऑफ इट बट अनलेस यू हैव अ वेरी एक्टिव पीपल इंटरफेस यू वुड नॉट बी एबल टू कैरी आउट योर जॉब या थैंक्स सर वी कैन कंटिन्यू दिस कन्वर्सेशन मे बी एट अ लेटर स्टेज ऑल्सो सम अदर डे सो वी हैव टू वाइंड अप टू एंड I think uh, let me say thank you very much. Yeah yeah sure 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 please. Yeah. So this uh, session is basically on uh, whether we need some more changes in laws or right. or the existing laws are sufficient. Uh I'll give you two examples why we need uh, laws. Like if you talk about Forest Conservation Act. Mere khayal se jitne bhi forest officers hain ya fir jo log us law ko jante hain sabhi log isko kahenge ki agar agar Forest Conservation Act nahi hota hamare paas itna फॉरेस्ट एरिया या फॉरेस्ट कवर नहीं होता द लैंड विच वॉज डाइवर्टेड प्रायर टू नाइनटीन एटी वॉज बेसिकली डाइवर्टेड बाई द स्टेट गवर्नमेंट्स एंड इफ यू सी द लैंड विच वर डाइवर्टेड प्रायर टू नाइनटीन एटी आर मे बी टेन टाइम्स और ट्वेंटी टाइम्स मे बी फिफ्टी टाइम्स मोर देन द रिक्वायर्ड वन अगर आप देखेंगे देश में जितने भी नेशनल पार्क या सेंचुरीज हैं या टाइगर रिजर्व्स हैं सभी जगह डैम्स हैं और जितने भी डैम्स हैं वो सब फॉरेस्ट लैंड डाइवर्ट हुई है not only for construction of dam but for the habitation also for for the irrigation department or the or the uh, electricity department aur jitne bhi areas hai sabhi jagah encroachment hai because the land which was supposed to be given back to the forest department was never given and the land which was required basically uh, jo land jitni unko mili hai that is in in multiples of 10 or 20 so that's why that that is the role which is played by certain laws so laws are always dynamic and the need is also always dynamic and as far as uh, whether our existing laws are sufficient isme main ek bada simple se example dena chahunga yes definitely we have one of the most strict laws as far as forest and wildlife is concerned in our country and lots of additional powers which are there with the forest officer than the police officers there are certain laws like certain uh, issues जिनको हम लोग एक सिंपल मैनेजमेंट इशू समझते हैं या फिर एक सिंपल डेवलपमेंटल इशू भी समझते हैं एंड दैट इज वेरी क्रिटिकल एट दिस पॉइंट ऑफ टाइम इन कंट्री फॉर फॉर प्रोटेक्शन ऑफ फॉरेस्ट एंड आल्सो विद रिस्पेक्ट टू फेस ऑफ फॉरेस्ट डिपार्टमेंट कि फॉरेस्ट डिपार्टमेंट क्या करता है दैट इशू इज टूरिज्म रेगुलेशन हम लोग बात करते मैनी टाइम वी कॉल इट इको टूरिज्म मैनेजिंग इको टूरिज्म If you ask me personally, after putting in these 25 years in service, there is there is no area where we have ecotourism in our country, except for maybe maybe one or two places like places like Eagles Nest and all. Ecotourism कहीं नहीं है. ये सिर्फ tourism है. And when we call it tourism, so it has to be regulated. So what the need of the day is that this is one area. where our regulation is one of the or or the law enforcement is one of the poorest bahut kharab hai tourism regulation mein jo jitna enforcement hona chahiye tha logo ka wo nahi ho raha hai aur uh, iske liye hum log responsible hain hona chahiye tha nahi ho raha wo ek alag baat hai and one more thing i would like to add here is that it is not only regulation aur aapne koi law tha enforce nahi kiya koi baat nahi wo chhoot gaya kisi ne galti ki thi usne wo chhoot gaya itna nahi hai this is adding to multiple problems and in most of the tiger reserves where we are not having a proper tourism regulation or law enforcement the animal behavior is changing animal behavior is changing in many aspects uh, if you take examples of maharashtra thodoba ka example lijiye ya baki even even corbett ka bhi example lijiye where we happily give names to different tigers किसी को मछली बोलते हैं किसी को हम कॉलर वाली बोलते हैं किसी को पार वाली बोलते हैं किसी को विराट बोलते हैं किसी को किसी और नाम से जानते हैं तो दैट इज हाउ वी आर बेसिकली अनरेगुलेटेड टूरिज्म हम बहुत से लोग कहते हैं कि नाम होना चाहिए टाइगर क्या प्रॉब्लम है उसमें वेन वी गिव नेम्स टू टाइगर दो आई एम डाइग्रेसिंग अ बिट बट आई विल कम बैक टू द टॉपिक जब हम नाम देते हैं किसी एनिमल को या किसी इंडिविजुअल को वेन वी गो बैक अगेन टू देयर देयर एरिया वी जस्ट लाइक टू सी दैट एनिमल अगेन जब हम किसी एनिमल को बार बार देखते हैं तो एनिमल ऑल्सो गेट हैबिचुएटेड टू द ह्यूमन प्रेजेंस 
एंड दे गेट कॉन्सेंट्रेटेड इन पर्टिकुलर एरियाज अगर आप जितने भी वाइल्ड लाइफ एरियाज देखेंगे आप वहाँ पर जो पॉपुलेशन है टाइगर्स की स्पेशली इन 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 टूरिज्म जोन्स इज इंक्रीजिंग देन द एक्चुअल कैरिंग कैपेसिटी और इकोलॉजिकल कैपेसिटी ऑफ दैट एरिया एंड दैट्स वाई लोट्स ऑफ कॉन्फ्लिक्ट आर हैपनिंग आप तोड़ो वाई इज इज द इज द इज द इज द ग्रेटेस्ट एग्जाम्पल और इवन कॉर बेट इवन अदर एरियाज ऑल्सो जहाँ पर कभी भी बेसिकली कॉन्फ्लिक्ट नहीं होता था आई एल गिव यू वन एग्जाम्पल वेरी वेरी सिंपल एग्जाम्पल फ्रॉम माई माई स्टेट माई स्टेट ऑफ टूरिज्म रेगुलेशन इन कॉर्बेट और और तड़ोबा और एनी अदर प्लेस वेयर टूरिज्म रेगुलेशन इज नॉट एट एट एज एज इट इज रिक्वायर्ड मे बी बिकॉज ऑफ मैनी रीजन्स देर आर सिमिलर एरियाज विच आर नॉट इवन टाइगर रिजर्व देर इज वन प्लेस वेर आई वर्क दैट इज कॉल्ड हल्द्वानी फॉरेस्ट डिविजन आप उस एरिया में जाएंगे तो आप चाहे गाड़ी से चले जाएं चाहे आप हाथी से चले जाएं चाहे पैदल चले जाएं आपको टाइगर नहीं दिखेगा You then you put camera traps. You will find tiger in each and every compartment of that particular division, and there is no conflict. And that area where we don't have any tourism, I am not against tourism, but at the same time we have to understand these ecological uh, 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 systems or principles, uh, where we need to uh, have a proper implementation of uh, uh, tourism regulation through our our laws. just a couple of things i needed to add uh, by way of information uh, infusion of technology is extremely important so as a part of a scheme that i implement we now have a national network of continuous operating reference stations it is administered by survey of india so uh, you just need a rover and a handheld antenna and you can have 5 cm accuracy for every location that you are taking so with reference to lafard judgment i don't know if if that thing is still active or what uh, so it affords you a unique opportunity to geo reference areas wherever you think uh, it is possible or it is a low hanging target uh, you can get the survey of india the local gdc director to come and tell you about it in your state i think uh, it is a huge opportunity uh, the other thing uh, is that there are a number of permissions and permits and uh, transit things uh, that we foresters deliver so uh, given the acts and all that are there we need to look at them in a service delivery uh, kind of a mode so there should be service level benchmarks and as far as possible uh, we are trying to do it with a few things in the panchayat domain there is a, a citizen charter that we uh, got accepted by all gps तो अगर हम लोग फॉरेस्ट में भी वो करने लगे हैं लॉट ऑफ फोन कॉल दैट आई गेट फ्रॉम फ्रेंड्स एंड पीपल फ्रॉम अदर डिपार्टमेंट्स एंड ऑल दैट कि हमें ये चीज़ चाहिए तो सम पीपल हैव हैव रियली डन सो वेल फॉर इंस्टेंस कॉर्बेट वेयर द परमिशंस एंड ऑल आर वेरी वेल रेगुलेटेड काना अ लॉट ऑफ दीज प्लेस दैट आर देयर बट दीज आर टिपिकल टू दी Uh, what uh, suren says are not eco tourism areas they are basically tourism areas but they've done a good job of it to apne jo lakdi ke timber ke aur jitne bhi sare cheeze hoti hain usme se kisi service level benchmark se ke uski online delivery kar paaye it would be uh, a massive step uh, in regaining credibility that's it थैंक यू सो मच सर थैंक यू सुरेंद्र मेरा जी थैंक यू आलोक नगर जी थैंक यू सो मच सर थैंक सो मच थैंक यू सो मच पैनलिस्ट थैंक यू सो मच फॉर ज्वाइनिंग अस टुडे एंड नाउ आई होप यू आर ऑल एंजॉइंग द सेरेमनी सो फार बट आई थिंक वी नीड अ मच डिजर्विंग ब्रेक सो लेट्स टेक अ ब्रेक आई लाइक टू इन्वाइट यू टू ज्वाइन अस फॉर हाई टी इन द फोर ऑन द फर्स्ट फ्लोर दिस विल बी अ वंडरफुल अपॉर्चुनिटी टू नेटवर्क एंड डिस्कस द इंस्पायरिंग टॉपिक्स कवर टूडे